They were talented and kind-hearted individuals. Known for their bravery and sense of justice, their parents were brilliant scientists working on advanced technologies, including research on cosmic energies and dimensional travel. The experiment, tragically, their peaceful existence was shattered when Dr. Hido, a rogue scientist with a twisted vision of using advanced technology to control the multiverse, kidnapped the brothers Dr. Hino's experiments aimed to merge human consciousness with powerful android bodies creating super-powered beings to serve his dark ambitions. Natsu and Darius were subjected to a process that transformed them into androids known as Andolds blending their human essence with advanced technology. Transformation and awakening, the transformation into Andolds granted Natsu and Darius immense powers, but erased much of their original human memories. Dr. Hido's manipulation caused them to forget their past lives and family, turning them into formidable warriors under his control. Despite their new identities, remnants of their human selves remained hidden beneath layers of technology and dark influence. The Great Escape, not so. Driven by an inner sense of justice, they eventually managed to break free from Dr. Hido's control. He discovered the truth about his transformation and the existence of the multiverse through fragmented memories and hidden files from Dr. Hido's lab determined to uncover his past and redeem himself. Natsu set out on a journey across various universes. The journey through the multiverse. As Natsu traveled through the multiverse, he encountered and formed alliances with various characters, each contributing to his growth and understanding of his past. Sonic the Hedgehog and friends, Natsu crossed paths with Sonic and his friends, joining forces to combat threats to their world. Sonic's bravery and camaraderie helped Natsu piece together fragments of his forgotten humanity. In the Dragon Ball Z universe, Natsu encountered Goku and other warriors. Their battles and interactions provided insights into his own strength and the nature of his powers. In Kingdom Hearts, Natsu met Sora and his allies who helped him understand the connection between light and darkness, resonating with his internal struggle. Fine and Emma from Trails of Cold Steel provided guidance and a sense of purpose, helping Natsu navigate through emotional conflicts and find a path towards redemption. The Revelation of Daria Throughout his journey, Natsu began to uncover more about his brother Daria, who had also escaped from Dr. Hido's control, but had been manipulated into serving different causes. The brothers' paths crossed several times, often as adversaries each believing the other to be lost or corrupted. Rediscovery of humanity. As Natsu's memories started to resurface, he recalled the kindness and values he once held dear. His interactions with various characters from different universes played a crucial role in restoring his sense of self not so gradually, remembered his past life, his family, and the love he once shared with his brother. The ultimate confrontation between Natsu and Darius became a turning point in their journey. They had to confront Dr. Hido together, combining their strengths and memories to defeat their creator and free themselves from his influence. Through their battle, they rediscovered their bond as brothers and reconciled their past with their new identities. With Dr. Hido defeated and their past reconciled, Natsu and Darius embraced their roles as protectors of the multiverse. Their journey became a legend, inspiring many with their story of redemption, unity, and the enduring bond of family. Chapter Q The Discovery of Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 the calm before the storm, after the defeat of Dr. Hito, and their reconciliation, Natsu and Darius found themselves at a crossroads. They had unraveled much of their past and reclaimed their identities, but a sense of incompleteness lingered memories still felt fragmented as though pieces of their story were missing. 
While exploring Dr. Hito's old laboratory, now abandoned and crumbling, Natsu and Darius stumbled upon a hidden chamber that had been sealed off inside. They discovered a series of encrypted files labeled Project Gamma Intrigued and Uneasy. The brothers delved into the files, uncovering information that would change everything they thought they knew the revelation. The files revealed the existence of two more androids, designated as Gamma 1 and Gamma 2. These androids were created after Natsu and Darius, based on the same advanced technology and genetic material used in their own transformations. But unlike Natsu and Darius, who had retained some of their human essence, Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 were designed to be nearly perfect warriors, loyal only to Dr. Hito's will. The Natsu and Darius were stunned by this revelation. The knowledge that they had two more siblings, created in the same way they were, filled them with a mix of emotions, shock, sadness, and a deep sense of responsibility. They wondered what kind of lives Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 had led, and whether they were still under Dr. Hito's influence. The search begins determined to find their lost siblings. Natsu and Darius embarked on a new journey across the multiverse. They followed clues left behind in Dr. Hito's files, visiting different worlds and seeking out information about the whereabouts of Gamma 1 and Gamma 2. Eventually, their search led them to a remote and desolate world where the remnants of Dr. Hito's operation still lingered. Here, they finally encountered Gamma 1 and Gamma 2, two powerful and imposing figures who bore an uncanny resemblance to Natsu and Darius, yet exuded an aura of cold efficiency and detachment. The clash of ideals, the initial meeting was tense, Gamma 1 and Gamma 2, still programmed to view Natsu and Darius as potential threats, engaged them in combat, the battle was intense, with Natsu and Darius struggling to match their siblings' ruthless precision, but as they fought, Natsu and Darius tried to reach out to them, reminding them of their shared origins and the humanity that still existed within them. During the battle, a breakthrough occurred. Natsu managed to connect with Gamma 1 on an emotional level, stirring long-buried memories within him. Darius similarly reached out to Gamma 2, invoking the bond of family and shared pain. Slowly, the cold exteriors of Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 began to crack, and they started to question their purpose and the orders they had been following. Realizing the truth of their situation, Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 hesitated, their loyalty to Dr. Hito wavering in that moment of vulnerability. Natsu and Darius stopped fighting and extended their hands to their siblings, offering them a chance to break free from their programming and choose their own paths. Overwhelmed by the emotions they had long suppressed, Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 finally accepted Natsu and Darius as their brothers. The four siblings stood together, united for the first time, with a shared goal of finding their own destinies beyond the shadow of Dr. Hito's control. A new beginning, with their family now complete, Natsu. Darius, Gamma 1, and Gamma 2 set out to explore the multiverse together. They vowed to protect each other and the worlds they encountered, forging a new legacy as a family of powerful beings who had overcome their dark origins. Their journey was just beginning, and together they would face whatever challenges the multiverse had in store. Chapter 3 A New Quest for Home The search for belonging, united as a family, not so Darius Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 found themselves with a new mission to find a place where they could truly belong. A universe they could call home. Although they had traveled through countless worlds and faced many challenges, none of these places had felt like a true home for them. Now with their bond as brothers stronger than ever, they were determined to find a world where they could build a new life together. Preparing for the journey. Before embarking on their quest, the brothers returned to Dr. Hino's old lab one last time there. They gathered what resources and information they could to aid in their journey. They knew that finding a new universe to call home would not be easy, and they would need all the help they could get Natsu with his experience and leadership. Took charge of planning their route while Darius focused on ensuring they were well prepared for any challenges they might face. Gamma 1 and Gamma 2, still adjusting to their newfound freedom, used their enhanced abilities to scan and analyze potential universes. The first steps. The brothers set off, 
traveling from one universe to another. Each world they visited offered something different. Some were filled with lush landscapes and peaceful civilizations, while others were harsh and dangerous with powerful beings guarding their territories. Although many of these worlds were beautiful, none of them quite felt like the home they were seeking. But with each new world, the brothers grew closer, learning more about themselves and each other. The world of legends. After many months of searching, the brothers arrived at a universe unlike any they had encountered before this universe was filled with vibrant energy, and its worlds were inhabited by legendary heroes and ancient beings of immense power. The brothers were drawn to one particular world where the energy seemed to resonate with their very essence. This world was teeming with life with vast cities and diverse landscapes ranging from majestic mountains to serene oceans. As they explored this new world, the brothers encountered many different beings. Some were kind and welcoming, while others were wary of the newcomers. The brothers found themselves facing challenges and tests of their abilities. But each time they overcame these obstacles by working together. The more they explored, the more they felt a connection to this world, as if it had been waiting for them all along. After many trials and adventures, the brothers finally found a place within this world that felt like home. It was a tranquil valley surrounded by mountains and filled with lush forests and clear rivers. The energy in this place was harmonious, and the brothers could sense that it was a place of great power and peace. They decided to settle here, building a home where they could live together as a family, away from the turmoil and dangers of their past, building a new life. Over time, the brothers transformed the valley into a thriving sanctuary. They constructed a home that reflected their unique identities, combining technology and nature in harmony. They also began to interact more with the inhabitants of the world, forming friendships and alliances that strengthened their ties to this new universe. The brothers found peace in their new lives, finally free from the shadow of their past and the constant need to fight. Despite finding a place to call home, the brothers knew that their journey was far from over. They had made a promise to protect each other and the multiverse from any threats that might arise. They established a network of allies across different universes, ready to spring into action if needed. But for now, they were content to enjoy the peace they had found, knowing that they had each other and a place to the legacy of the brothers. The story of Nazo, Darius, Gamma 1, and Gamma 2 became a legend in this new world. They were known not only for their incredible powers, but also for their unity and determination to overcome their dark origins. The brothers had found a new home, and with it, they had found a new purpose, to protect the peace they had earned, and to live the lives they had fought so hard to reclaim. Chapter 4 the calm before the new adventures. Settling in the peaceful valley that not so Darius Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 now called home quickly became a sanctuary, not just for them, but for the new friends and allies they had made along their journey. Each brother found his own role within this new life. Natsu, the natural leader, often took charge of organizing their community and planning for the future Darius, with his deep wisdom and empathy, became a mentor to those who sought guidance. Gamma 1 and Gamma 2, ever vigilant and protective, took on the role of guardians ensuring the safety of their new home, building a legacy. The brothers knew that their new home needed to be more than just a place to live. It needed to be a symbol of hope for others. They began to construct a great hall in the center of the valley, a place where beings from all universes could come together in peace. 
As the hall took shape, it became a hub of activity, attracting visitors from far and wide who were curious about the legendary brothers who had forged a new life from the remnants of their dark past. Despite the peace they had found, the brothers were ever aware that the multiverse was vast and full of unknown dangers. One day, all Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 were patrolling the outer boundaries of the valley. They encountered a strange phenomenon, a rift in the fabric of reality. Unlike anything they had seen before, the rift pulsed with a dark energy that reminded them of the chaos they had once known under Dr. Hito's control. Investigating the rift, Concerned that this rift could pose a threat to their new home, the brothers decided to investigate not-so-Darius Gamma-1 and Gamma-2 venture to the edge of the rift, where they were met with a powerful force trying to pull them in Not-so, using his experience with dark energy, managed to stabilize the rift just long enough for them to peer through to the other side. What they saw shocked them, a world consumed by darkness, with twisted malevolent beings that seemed to be searching for something or someone. As they watched, the brothers realized that the dark beings were moving with purpose and their destination was clear. They were headed straight for the valley. The rift began to widen and the brothers knew that they had little time to prepare. They quickly returned to their home, gathering their allies and warning the inhabitants of the impending danger. United we stand in the gravity of the situation. The brothers rallied their forces. Naso, with his leadership skills, coordinated the defense of the valley. Darius, who had become a trusted figure among their allies, inspired hope and determination in those who were free Gallup 1 and Gallup 2. Ever vigilant, took up strategic positions at the front lines, ready to face the enemy head on. As the dark beings emerged from the rift, the valley erupted into chaos. The brothers fought fiercely, using all their strength and skills to protect their home. The battle was intense, with waves of enemies attempting to break through their defenses. But despite the odds, the brothers held their ground, each one playing a crucial role in the fight. Just when it seemed that the dark forces might overwhelm them, a powerful figure appeared from within the rift, a warrior clad in ancient armor, wielding a weapon that shone with a brilliant light. This mysterious ally charged into battle alongside the brothers, turning the tide in their favor together. They pushed back the dark forces, eventually sealing the rift and restoring peace to the valley. After the battle, the brothers approached the mysterious warrior, who introduced himself as Zorak, a guardian from a distant universe. Zorak explained that the dark forces they had encountered were part of a larger threat that was spreading across the multiverse, seeking to consume all light, and hope he had been tracking his forces for some time, and had come to the brothers' world to warn them. With the threat of darkness looming over the multiverse, the brothers realized that their journey was far from over. They knew that they could not simply defend their home. Naso, Darius Gamma-1, Gamma-2, and their new ally Zorak made a pact to venture into the unknown, seeking out the heart of the dark forces and putting an end to their reign of terror. Farewell to the valley. Before setting out on their new mission, the brothers made preparations to protect their home in their absence. They left trusted allies in charge of the valley, ensuring that it would remain a safe haven for those who needed it. As they departed, the valley's inhabitants gathered to bid them farewell, knowing that their fate now rested in the hands of the four brothers and their mysterious ally. With their hearts filled with determination, and a newfound sense of purpose, the brothers, along with Zorak, embarked on their greatest adventure. Yet they knew that the road ahead would be fraught with danger, but they were ready to face whatever challenges lay in wait. Together, they would travel across the multiverse, fighting to preserve the light and protect the countless lives that depend on them in the next chapter. As they journeyed into the unknown, the brothers could feel the weight of their responsibility, but they knew that the road ahead would be fraught with danger. Ready to face whatever challenges lay in wait. Together they would travel across the ultimate.
multiverse Fight to preserve the white And protect the countless lives that depended on them As they journeyed into the unknown The brothers could feel the weight of their responsibility But they also knew that they were stronger together And that their bond would carry them through Even the darkest of times The legend of Natsu, Darius, Gamma 1, Gamma 2 And Zorak was just beginning And their story would be one of courage, hope and the unbreakable power of family. Chapter 5, A New Arrival. The journey continues. Natsu, Darius, Gamma 1, Gamma 2, and their new ally Zorak had traveled through several universes, confronting the dark forces threatening the multiverse. Their bond had grown stronger with each battle, and they had earned a reputation as powerful protectors of the light. However, the deeper they ventured into the unknown, the more formidable their enemies became. A familiar presence. As they ventured into yet another universe, the group found themselves in a realm that felt oddly familiar to Natsu and Darius. The landscape was desolate, with remnants of a once great city now in ruins. The air was thick with tension, as if something powerful and dangerous lurked nearby. It wasn't long before they sensed a presence, one that Natsu recognized instantly. Suddenly, out of the shadows, a figure emerged. It was Shadow the Hedgehog, standing tall with his arms crossed, his crimson eyes locked onto Natsu. The atmosphere crackled with energy as the two powerful beings faced each other. Natsu, Shadow said in a low measured tone, I never thought I'd see you again. Shadow, Naso replied, a mixture of surprise and caution in his voice. What are you doing here? The past and the present. Shadow uncrossed his arms and stepped forward. I've been tracking the same dark forces you've been fighting. They've been invading different dimensions, corrupting everything they touch. I couldn't stand by and let it happen. Naso nodded. We've encountered them too. They're more dangerous than we initially thought. We could use your help. An uneasy alliance. Shadow's gaze shifted to Darius, Gamma 1, and Gamma 2, then back to Naso. I work alone, he said, his voice carrying an edge of defiance. But if this threat is as serious as you say, then I'll join you on my terms. Darius, sensing the tension, stepped forward. We're all on the same side here, Shadow. This isn't just about any one of us. The multiverse is at stake. Shadow, consider Darius's words, then gave a curt nod. Fine, but I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to stop those who threaten what I protect. A formidable ally. With Shadow now on their side, the group felt a renewed sense of determination. Shadow's power and experience would be invaluable in the battles ahead, and despite his solitary nature, the brothers knew they could rely on him when it mattered most. The team continued their journey, now bolstered by Shadow's presence. They encountered a series of dark rifts, each one more difficult to close than the last. Shadow's expertise in dealing with chaos energy proved essential, allowing them to contain the darkness more effectively. As they pressed forward, they discovered that the dark forces were being controlled by a powerful entity deep within the heart of a shattered dimension. The team prepared for what they knew would be their most challenging battle yet. Would be their most challenging battle yet. Before they ventured into the final rift, Natsu turned to Shadow. We may not always see eye to eye, but I'm glad you're here. We'll need all our strength to face what's coming. Shadow glanced at Naso, his expression unreadable. Don't get used to it, he replied, but there was a hint of respect in his tone. Let's finish this. Together, Naso, Darius, Gamma 1, Gamma 2, Shadow, and Zorak entered the rift, ready to face the darkness head on the battle that awaited them would test their limits. But with Shadow's addition to the team, they knew they stood a fighting chance. As the darkness closed in around them, the group prepared for the final confrontation that would determine the fate of the multiverse and perhaps forge an unbreakable bond between them all. Chapter 6 about your troubling dream. A restless night. As the group settled down for the night, each member found a place to rest within the strange new universe they had ventured into Natsu. The weary
weary from their recent battles Felt it difficult to sleep His mind was a whirlwind of memories and thoughts And soon he drifted into a deep, uneasy slumber The dream in his dream Nazel found himself standing in a barren, desolate wasteland The sky was a swirling mix of dark clouds And the ground beneath him was cracked and lifeless He felt an ominous presence One that sent a chill down his spine As he looked around Two figures emerged from the darkness The first was tall and imposing With cold, calculating eyes And an expression of ruthless determination it was Android 13 from the Dragon Ball Z universe His blue eyes locking onto Nazo With a mixture of recognition and menace You again, Android 13 said His voice echoing through the void We never did finish what we started Before Nazo could respond Another figure stepped forward One that sent a jolt of shock through him It was Scourge the Hedgehog His dark green fur and cruel smile Unmistakable, Nazo hadn't seen him in what felt like an eternity And the memories of their brief time together came rushing back A forgotten past In the dream, Nazo suddenly remembered working for Scourge long ago It was a time he had buried deep within his mind A past life where he had followed Scourge's orders Causing chaos and destruction But something had happened Something that caused Nazo to flee from Scourge's influence and eventually forget about him entirely. Remember me, Nazo? Scourge sneered, his voice tripping with malice. You used to be useful. Now look at you, running around with heroes, trying to save the multiverse pathetic. Nazo felt a surge of conflicting emotions. The memories of his time with Scourge were hazy. But the feelings of fear and regret were all too real He remembered running away Seeking to escape the darkness That Scourge represented Only to lose himself In countless battles Across the multiverse Android 13 and Scourge stood side by side Their eyes boring into Nazo As if judging his very soul The landscape around them grew darker The weight of his past Threatening to overwhelm him can't escape what you are, not so scourge taunted. You were born from chaos, and you return to it. No amount of heroics will change that. Android 13 remained silent, but his presence was a reminder of the powerful enemies. Nazo had made along the way. The dream felt all too real, and Nazo knew he had to confront these ghosts from his past. I'm not who I was. Nazo finally spoke, his voice steady. Despite the fear gnawing at him I've changed! I've found a purpose beyond destruction I've found a purpose beyond destruction Scourge laughed A cruel, mocking sound that echoed through the void You can try to run from your past But it will always find you You're a fool to think you can change Waking up, the dream began to crumble around Nazo the figures of Android 13 and Scourge dissolving into the darkness But their words lingered, leaving a heavy weight on his heart As he woke with a start, the remnants of the dream clung to him like a dark cloud And he resolved, Nazo sat up, breathing heavily, his mind racing The dream had unearthed memories he had long buried And the faces of Android 13 and Scourge haunted him But instead of letting fear control him Nazo made a decision He would face his past Confront the shadows That still lingered in his heart And prove to himself And to those who doubted him That he could rise above it The path ahead would be difficult But with his brothers and allies by his side Nazo knew he wouldn't face it alone As the first light of dawn broke over the horizon Nazo resolved to keep moving forward Determined to find a new universe where he and his brothers could finally call home A place where they could start anew Free from the ghosts of their past Chapter 7A New 
day dawns. The morning after, the first rays of sunlight filtered through the strange, alien trees of the new universe, casting a soft, otherworldly glow across the camps like Nazo. Still shaken by the dream from the previous night, had risen early. The restlessness in his mind had driven him to seek the comfort of a familiar routine. He moved quietly through the small camp, careful not to wake his brothers, Gamma-1, Gamma-2, and Darius, who were still sound asleep. The events of their recent journey had been exhausting, and they needed every moment of rest they could get. White chocolate coffee, Nazo made his way to a small, portable coffee maker he had brought along. One of the few items that made him feel at home, no matter where they traveled. He set it up and began preparing his usual morning drink, white chocolate coffee. The rich, sweet aroma soon filled the air, mingling with the fresh scent of the new universe's flora. As the coffee brewed, Naso found himself reflecting on the dream again. The images of Android 13 and Scourge, along with the harsh words they had spoken, lingered in his mind. But the act of making his coffee, a simple yet comforting ritual, helped to steady his thoughts. Waiting for the others, Nazo poured the steaming, white chocolate coffee into a mug. Taking a sip as he leaned against a nearby tree, the warmth of the drink spread through him, soothing his nerves. He stared out at the strange landscape, taking in the unfamiliar sights and sounds of the new universe they had ventured into. He knew it would be a while before the others woke up. They had been through so much together, and each of them had their own struggles to face. But Nazo also knew that this universe, with all its mysteries and challenges, held the potential for a fresh start, a chance to find a place they could finally call home. As he waited, Nazo allowed himself to enjoy the quiet morning. The dream had left him with questions, but he was determined to find answers as they continued to explore this new world. For now though, he would let his brothers rest, savoring the moment of peace before the day began in earnest. A new resolve. With each sip of his coffee, Nazo felt a renewed sense of purpose. They had come so far together, and no matter what challenges lay ahead, he was ready to face them. He would confront his past, protect his brothers, and carve out a future for them in this strange new universe. As the first sounds of stirring came from the camp, Nazo finished his coffee and set the mug down, ready to greet the day and whatever it might bring. Today was a new beginning, and Nazo was determined to make the most of it. Chapter 8, A New Journey Begins the camp awakens, the soft rustling of leaves and the distant calls of unfamiliar creatures slowly stirred the others from their sleep. Darius was the first to wake, rubbing his eyes and stretching as he sat up. Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 followed, their eyes still heavy with sleep, but alert as ever. As they gathered around the campfire from the previous night, they noticed not so finishing up his coffee and packing away the small coffee maker. Darius yawned, giving Natso a nod of acknowledgement. Morning, Natso, that coffee smells good. Natso smiled faintly and handed Darius a thermos of the leftover coffee. Help yourself. We've got a big day ahead of us. Shadow's departure and for a quick breakfast, not so sharp eyes caught a glimpse of movement on the outskirts of the camp. It was Shadow the Hedgehog walking purposefully away from the group, his expression as stoic as ever. Not so quick packed up the last of his things and moved to intercept him. Shadow, not so called out, jogging up to the Black Hedgehog. Where are you going? Shadow paused, glancing back over his shoulder. His crimson eyes narrowed slightly, and his voice was calm but firm. It's part of my mission from GUN. I've got my own path to follow. Nazo frowned, sensing there was more to Shadow's departure than he was letting on. Are you sure that's all? You don't have to leave so soon. Shadow hesitated for a brief moment, his gaze shifting to the horizon. Something's coming. Not so I don't know who or what, but you should stay alert. It could be trouble. Nazo's expression hardened as he nodded. I appreciate the warning. We'll be ready. 
With that shadow turned away and continued on his path His figure quickly disappearing into the thick forest Not so watched him go A mixture of concern and curiosity gnawing at him He trusted Shadow's instincts If he said something was coming Then they needed to be on guard Not so didn't push further Understanding that some things were better left unsaid for now He simply nodded in return Good luck then Stranger gave a small wave before heading off in the opposite direction from Shadow Natsu, watched him disappear into the forest as well, feeling a strange sense of foreboding first Shadow, now this new guy. Whatever was coming, it was something they couldn't ignore. Returning to the group, Natsu found Darius, Gamma 1, and Gamma 2 finishing up their breakfast. He could see the questions in their eyes. But they knew better than to ask. The brothers were already attuned to the fact that their journey was going to be anything but ordinary. Nazo packed up the rest of the camp, securing his coffee maker with a bit more care than usual. As they prepared to move on, Nazo addressed the group, his tone steady but serious shadows gone. He warned us that someone or something might be coming. We need to stay sharp. What do you think it is? Nazo shook his head. I don't know, but we'll be ready. Let's move out and find out what this universe has in store for us. With that, the four brothers set off into the unknown. Their senses heightened and their bonds stronger than ever. The path ahead was uncertain, but they were determined to face whatever challenges awaited them in this new universe together. Chapter 9. The Discovery of the Cave. Exploration begins. After a few hours of trekking through the unfamiliar landscape, the group stumbled upon a large, ominous-looking cave. Its entrance was partially obscured by thick vines and ancient rocks, giving it an air of mystery. The four brothers ex exchanged glances, their curiosity piqued. This could be a good place to set up for the night, Darius suggested, peering into the darkness of the cave. It might even lead us somewhere interesting. Nazo nodded in agreement, feeling a strange pull toward the cave. Let's check it out. We should see where it goes, and if it's safe to stay here. The group entered the cave, their footsteps echoing against the damp stone walls. As they ventured deeper, the cave began to widen until it opened up into a vast chamber. In the center of the chamber, they found four distinct passageways, each leading off into a different direction the four paths. The brothers gathered in the center of the chamber, looking down each passage the paths were identical, each one dark and foreboding, with no indication of where they might lead. Well, it looks like we each take a path, Gamma One suggested, his tone pragmatic. We can cover more ground that way and find out where each one goes. Darius nodded in agreement. If we don't find anything, we'll come back here and regroup. The brothers each chose a path, exchanging nods of encouragement before heading off into the unknown Natsu, feeling a strange pull toward the third path, took a deep breath and ventured down it alone. Nazo's descent, the chosen was steep and narrow, forcing him to move cautiously as he descended deeper into the cave. The walls began to close in around him, and the air grew colder. Despite the discomfort, Nazo pressed on, determined to see where the path would lead. Suddenly, the ground beneath him gave way, and Nazo found himself plummeting down a steep slope. He tumbled through the darkness, unable to stop his descent. After what felt like an eternity, Nazo hit the ground with a thud, the impact knocking the wind out of him. Groaning in pain, Nazo slowly opened his eyes, only to find himself staring at the bottom of a giant purple shoe. The shoe of none other than Big the Cat. The weight of the shoe pinned Nazo to the ground, rendering him unable to move. Hey, Big! Get off me! Nazo grunted, trying to wriggle free, but the massive cat's shoe held him firmly in place. An unlikely encounter. Big, startled by the sudden voice from beneath his foot, lifted his shoe slightly and looked down. Huh? Nazo? What are you doing down there? Nazo let out a sigh of relief as Big lifted his foot just enough for him to breathe more easily, though he was still partially pinned. I fell through a cave and ended up here. How about you let me up? Big 
scratched his head, clearly confused, but not opposed to helping. Oh, sorry about that, Nazo. I didn't see you there. Nazo, I didn't see you there. Before Big could fully lift his foot, Nazo had an idea. Wait, Big, how about we keep this between us? I'll stay under your shoe for a bit, and when my brothers come looking, we can surprise them. Big chuckled. His deep voice rumbling through the cave. That sounds like fun. Sure, I won't tell anyone. Nazo grinned, appreciating the unexpected camaraderie with the giant cat. It wasn't often that he found himself in such a strange predicament, but he knew how to make the best of it. For a while, Nazo and Big chatted quietly, talking about their past adventures and the various characters they had encountered Big, with his simple but good-hearted nature, made for an oddly comforting companion in the dark cave. As they talked, Nazo realized that despite the bizarre circumstances, he was actually enjoying the moment. The weight of Big's shoe was a constant reminder of his current situation, but it also grounded him, giving him a rare chance to relax and reflect. After a while, the sound of footsteps echoed through the cave. Nazo tensed slightly, knowing his brothers were near. The surprise, down a one, down a two, and Darius entered the chamber where Nazo and Big were. Their voices carried through the cave as they called out for their brother. Nazo, where are you? Darius's voice rang out, concern evident in his tone. Big glanced down at Nazo, who nodded in return. The time had come. Hey guys. Nazo called out, his voice muffled from under Big Shoe. I'm down here. The brothers rushed over, eyes widening in shock as they saw Nazo pinned under Big's massive foot. But the Nazo! What are you doing under there? Yama too exclaimed, half in disbelief and half in Nazo dusted himself off, a sheepish grin on his face. Yeah, we thought we'd give you guys a bit of a surprise. Darius shook his head, a smile tugging at the corners of his mouth. You never cease to amaze me, brother. With the group reunited, they shared a moment of laughter. The tension of the day's exploration melting away. The bond between them had grown stronger through their shared experiences. And even in the strangest of circumstances, they found a way to connect. As they prepared to leave the cave, Nazo glanced back at Big, grateful for the brief but meaningful encounter. Thanks, Big. Let's catch up again soon. Big nodded, his usual cheerful smile in place. Anytime, Nazo. Take care. With that, the brothers continued their journey, leaving the cave behind and venturing into the unknown, ready to face whatever new challenges awaited them in this strange universe. Chapel 10, The Island Discovery. The four brothers continued their exploration, moving through the dense foliage of the new universe they found themselves in. After hours of walking, they finally emerged from the thick forest and onto a sandy beach. In the distance, a small island rose out of the ocean, surrounded by crystal clear waters. It seemed like a tranquil place, but something about it caught Naso's attention. That island, there's something off about it, Naso said, his eyes narrowing as he studied the distant landmass. We should check it out. The others nodded in agreement, and without hesitation, they made their way to the island. The journey was quick, and soon enough, they set foot on the strange land. The island was small, with palm trees swaying gently in the breeze, and the sound of waves lapping against the shore filled the air. But amidst the serene beauty, Naso's keen senses detected something hidden. As they explored, Naso felt a sudden urge to investigate a particular spot near the center of the island. His intuition led him straight to a partially buried treasure chest, half hidden and under some vines and sand. Looks like we found something interesting, Naso said, kneeling down to inspect the chest. The old weathered wood was covered in seaweed, and the metal bindings were rusty, but it was still intact. Darius, Gamma 1, and Gamma 2 gathered around, intrigued by the find should we open it, Gamma 2 asked, his eyes gleaming with curiosity. Naso nodded. Let's make sure everything's okay inside. The unexpected trap. With a quick motion, Naso lifted the heavy lid of the chest, but as soon as he peered inside, a strange force pulled him downward before he could react. The chest's interior seemed to warp and expand, and Naso was sucked into the void, disappearing from sight. The lid slammed shut behind him, locking tight with a loud click. The brothers stared in shock at the now sealed chest. Naso, Darius shouted, reaching out for the chest, but it was too late, Naso was gone. 
Before the three could process what had just happened, a shadow fell over them. They turned to see a large ship docked nearby, its sails emblazoned with a skull and crossbones. A gang of rugged, swashbuckling pirates was approaching quickly, led by the formidable Captain Meal, a tall, imposing figure with a thick beard and a gleaming cutlass at his side. Nazo's captain. Inside the chest, Nazo was plunged into darkness, feeling disoriented as the strange magic of the chest trapped him. He struggled to find a way out, but it was no use. He was completely locked inside. The air was thick with the smell of salt and old wood, and his face was unnervingly tight. Suddenly, Nazo felt the chest being lifted, jostling him as it was moved. The muffled sounds of voices outside reached his ears, though he couldn't make out what was being said. The pirates had discovered the chest and were now carrying it back to their ship, completely unaware that they had more than just treasure in their possession. Captain Neil barked orders to his crew, and they moved swiftly to haul the chest aboard. This'll fetch a fine price. Get it on the ship, lads, he commanded, his voice full of confidence. The pirates followed his orders, quickly securing the chest in the ship's hold. Now so could feel the ship rocking gently as they set sail, leaving the island behind. The Brothers' Dilemma. Back on the island, Darius, Gamma 1, and Gamma 2 were left standing in the sand, bewildered and concerned. The pirates had vanished as quickly as they had appeared, and with them, they had taken not so. What just happened? Gamma 1 asked, his voice tense. How did they get the chest and not so, so fast? Darius clenched his fist, frustration boiling inside it. We need to get him back, but we have no idea where that ship is heading. Gamma 2 looked out to see his mind racing. If we can find a way off this island, we might be able to track them down. But we need to act fast. The three brothers quickly began to formulate a plan, determined to rescue Nazo from his unexpected captivity. Though they didn't know it yet, they were about to embark on a perilous adventure across the seas, facing new dangers and challenges as they sought to reunite with their brother. Nazo's resolve. Inside the chest, Nazo focused on calming his mind, knowing that panicking wouldn't help his situation. He needed to stay sharp and figure out a way to escape. As he concentrated, he felt a faint energy within the chest, a lingering magic that seemed to resonate with his own power. Perhaps if he could harness this energy, he might be able to break free. It wouldn't be easy, but Nazo was never one to back down from a challenge. He took a deep breath and began to gather his strength, ready to face whatever lay ahead. Little did he know, his brothers were already on their way, determined to bring him back, no matter what it took. Chapter 11. The Captain's Discovery. The creaking of the ship echoed in the hold as Captain Meal, now aboard with his crew, surveyed the treasure chest they had secured. His crew gathered around, eager to see what lay inside with a smirk. Captain Meal approached the chest, his peg leg thudding against the wooden floor. Let's see what we've got here, lads, he said, gripping the chest lid and prying it open with a practice motion. To the captain's surprise, instead of gold or jewels, the chest revealed a figure. A person curled up within its confines, Nazo, disoriented but alert, quickly unfolded himself and tried to stand. But before he could fully regain his balance, Captain Meal swiftly slammed the lid shut, forcing Nazo back down. What in the seven seas? Captain Meal muttered, more intrigued and startled his sharp eyes narrowed as he studied the unexpected stowaway. Nazo barely had time to process the situation before Captain Meal, with surprising speed for a man with a peg leg, seized him by the collar and yanked him out of the chest. The crew gasped, not expecting a person, let alone one as formidable, looking as Nazo to emerge from their prize. Captain Meal wasted no time, he threw Nazo down onto the deck The force of the impact causing Nazo to wince before Nazo could react Captain Meal slammed his peg leg down on Nazo's chest Pinning him to the ground, the captain then drew his cutlass Pressing the cold sharp blade against Nazo's neck Who are ye? And what were ye doing in me treasure chest? Captain Meal growled, his voice low and threatening His crew watched intently, eager to see how this unexpected situation would unfold In his breath looked up at the captain on Nazo. He said evenly, trying to keep calm despite the precarious situation. I was exploring the island with my brothers. I found the chest, and when I tried to open it, I got sucked inside. Next thing I know, I'm here. 
Captain Mulesson, his expression unreadable But the pressure of his peg leg and the cutlass remained firm So ye were after me, treasure were ye, he hissed A foolish move, boy, ye see Anything found in me chest belongs to me Not so clear back at the captain, unafraid I wasn't after your treasure, it was just a mistake but Captain Mill wasted no time, he threw now on Nazo's eyes narrowed in defiance But he was in no position to fight back He could feel the weight of the situation bearing down on him Literally, literally and figuratively You'll start by scrubbing the deck swap Captain Mill continued, his tone laced with a twisted sense of satisfaction And don't be thinking about running off, me crew has eyes everywhere and if you try to escape, you'll find yourself at the bottom of the sea. Captain Mule lifted his peg leg off Nazo's chest and gestured for his crew to take him away. Two burly pirates grabbed Nazo by the arms, hauling him to his feet. Nazo's mind raced as he was dragged across the deck, wondering how he could escape and reunite with his brothers. As Nazo was forced to start his new unwilling role aboard Captain Mule's ship, he couldn't shake the feeling that this was only the beginning of a much larger, more dangerous adventure. While Nazo was being introduced to his new life as Captain Mule's cabin boy, the other three brothers, Darius, Gamma 1, and Gamma 2, continued their search for Nazo after exploring the island and finding no sign of him. They stumbled upon the shoreline just in time to see a large pirate ship anchored offshore. The sight of the ship sent a jolt of urgency through them. That has to be where Nazo is. Gamma 1 said, his eyes narrowing as he pointed toward the ship. Agreed, Garius replied, clenching his fists, let's move. The brothers made their way to the ship, carefully approaching a small rowboat left on the beach. They quickly boarded it, and with Gamma 2 and Darius rowing with all their strength, they were soon on their way across the water toward Captain Neal's vessel. As they drew closer, they could see the crew bustling about on the deck, but there was no sign of Nazo. They had to be careful. Rushing in could easily get them captured, or worse. Once the boat reached the side of the ship, they quietly tied it off and began climbing the ropes that hung down the side of the ship. Darius reached the top first, peering over the edge to scan the deck. It didn't take long for him to spot Nazo, who was being forced to scrub the deck under the watchful eyes of several pirates. The sight of his brother, normally so powerful, being treated like a lowly servant, filled Darius with anger. Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 joined him at the top, and the three quickly formulated a plan. They decided to split up and attack from different angles, hoping to catch the pirates off guard and rescue Nazo before anyone could raise the alarm. Darius nodded to his brothers, and they silently moved into position. Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 each took opposite sides of the deck, while Darius stayed close to the center, keeping his eyes on Nazo and the pirates surrounding him. When they were ready, Darius gave a slight nod, and all three brothers sprang into action. Darius leaped onto the deck, landing with a thud that drew the attention of the pirates. He wasted no time, delivering a powerful punch to the nearest pirate, sending him flying across the deck. Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 moved just as swiftly, each taking down a pirate with precise, calculated strikes. The sudden assault caught the crew off guard, and chaos erupted on the deck. Nazo looked up in surprise as he saw his brothers fighting their way toward him. A mix of relief and determination surged through him as he realized they had come to rescue him. But before Nazo could move, Captain Neal appeared from behind, his cutlass gleaming in the sunlight. So, the cabin boys got friends, he sneered, blocking Nazo's path. Darius, seeing the threat, rushed forward to protect Nazo, but Captain Neal was ready. With a swift motion, he parried Darius' attack and countered with a powerful kick that sent Darius staggering back. Not so fast, lad, Captain Neal growled, his eyes glinting with malice. This one's mine! Nazo, now free from the pirate's grasp, stood his ground, his eyes locked on Captain Neal. You won't stop us, Nazo said, his voice steady despite the tension in the air. We're getting off this ship together. Captain Neal laughed, twirling his cutlass in his hand. Ye think ye can take on me and me crew? You're more foolish than I thought. But Nazo's confidence didn't waver. He knew his brothers were strong, and together they could overcome this challenge. As Darius Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 regrouped, they faced Captain Neal with renewed determination. The battle for freedom had begun, and the four brothers were ready to fight their way off the ship and continue their search for a place to call home. But first, they would have to deal with Captain Neal and his crew, who had no intention of letting them go without a fight. The 
clash on Captain Neil's ship intensified as the Thorn brothers fought with everything they had. Darius, Gamma-1, and Gamma-2 were relentless, striking down pirate after pirate with precision and power not so, though initially caught off guard by his captivity, quickly regained his composure, joining the fray with a fierce determination. Captain Neil, however, was not an easy foe. He fought with the cunning and brutality of a seasoned pirate, his cutlass flashing through the air as he parried and countered each of the brothers' attacks. But as the battle wore on, it became clear that the brothers had the upper hand. Their teamwork and resilience were too much for the captain and his crew to handle. With one final powerful strike, Darius disarmed Captain Meal, sending his cutlass clattering across the deck. Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 quickly subdued the remaining pirates while Natsu stood face to face with the defeated captain. You fought well, Natsu said, his voice cold and steady. But this ends now. Captain Neil, realizing he was beaten, slumped to his knees. Ye may have won this battle, lads, but the sea's a cruel mistress. You'll find no mercy out there. Ignoring the captain's ominous words, Nazo turned to his brothers. Let's get out of here. Just as they were about to leave the ship, the ground beneath them began to shake violently. A bright light erupted from the center of the deck, and before they could react, the brothers were engulfed in it. The ship around them seemed to dissolve, and they felt themselves falling through an endless void. When the light finally faded, the brothers found themselves lying on soft grass beneath a canopy of trees. They had been transported to a new location, far from the ship in Captain Neil's grasp. Darius was the first to sit up, looking around in bewilderment. Where are we? Nazo slowly stood, scanning the unfamiliar surroundings. I'm not sure, but it seems we've been thrown into another world. Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 rose to their feet, both looking equally confused but alert. Whatever this place is, Gamma 1 said, we need to stay on guard. We don't know what dangers might be here. Nazo nodded in agreement, right? We'll set up camp here for the night. We need to rest and figure out our next move. The brothers quickly gathered materials from the surrounding forest, setting up a makeshift camp. As night fell, they sat around a small fire, the flickering flames casting shadows on their faces. The air was filled with the sounds of the forest rustling leaves, distant animal calls, but the brothers remained vigilant, knowing they couldn't afford to let their guard down. As they settled in, Darius looked over at Nazo. Do you think we'll ever find a place to call home? Nazo stared into the fire for a moment before replying, I don't know, Darius, but we'll keep searching until we do. We've come this far together, and we'll keep going no matter where we end up. Gamma 2, who had been silently watching the surroundings, spoke up. Whatever challenges come our way, we'll face them as a family. We've already overcome so much. The brothers nodded in agreement, their bonds stronger than ever after the battles and trials they had faced. As they sat together under the starlit sky, they knew that their journey was far from over. But with each other's support, they were ready to face whatever the future held, determined to find a place where they could find be at peace. The fire crackled softly, and one by one, the brothers drifted off to sleep, their minds already thinking of the new challenges the next day might bring the night pass quietly, with only the sounds of the forest as their lullaby, as they rested and prepared for whatever lay ahead in this new world. Chapter 14 The Mysterious Disappearance The sun rose over the forest, its golden rays filtering through the trees and warming the campsite where the brothers had slept. The gentle light stirred Darius Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 from their slumber. They stretched and gathered around the campfire expecting to see Naso already up and ready for the day. However, as the brothers began to stir, they noticed something odd. The figure sitting by the fire was not quite like Naso. This version had a strangely familiar yet off-putting appearance. There was something subtly different about him, a coldness in his eyes and an unnatural stillness to his movements. Good morning, everyone, the figure said, his voice sounding almost like Natsos, but with a strange, detached quality. Morning, Darius replied, looking over at him with suspicion, how did you sleep? The figure's response was smooth and overly formal, very well. Ready to continue our journey? Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 exchanged uneasy glances Their instincts telling them something was wrong Gamma 1 took a step closer, narrowing his eyes You're not Nazo, are you?
expression remained impassive, but there was a flicker of something almost imperceptible, a hint of unease. What do you mean? Of course I am. Gamma too wasn't convinced. Naso would never act this way. You're hiding something. The brothers closed in on the figure who now seemed to be shifting nervously with a sudden burst of energy. Gamma One grabbed the figure's arm, revealing a metallic sheen beneath his skin. It's a doppelganger! Gamma One exclaimed, pushing the fake Naso away. It's not the real Naso. The doppelganger's facade began to crack, revealing its true nature. It quickly shifted into a more menacing form, a dark and twisted version of Natsu's appearance. The fake Natsu let out a sinister laugh as its form twisted and flickered, indicating that it was indeed an imitation designed to deceive. So you figured it out, the doppelganger sneered. But it's too late now. Your real brother is already far from here. clenched his fists, anger flashing in his eyes. Where is he? What have you done with Natsu? The doppelganger's eyes glinted with malevolent satisfaction. I don't know where he is, but he's been removed from this world. You'll have to search far and wide to find him again. The brothers looked at each other with determination. We're not letting this stop us. Gamma One said resolutely, we'll find Naso, no matter where he's been taken. The fake Naso made a sudden, desperate attempt to escape, but the brothers were ready. They tackled the doppelganger and quickly subdued it, ensuring it could no longer pose a threat. With the immediate danger dealt with, the brothers began to discuss their next steps. They knew they had to act quickly to track down the real Naso and find out where he had been taken. First, we need to figure out where this doppelganger came from, Darius said. There might be clues nearby that can help us locate Natsu. Gamma 2 nodded. Let's search the area we need to be thorough. The brothers set about investigating the campsite and the surrounding forest for any signs or clues that might lead them to Natsu's whereabouts. They examined the doppelganger's remains for any information it might have left behind scoured the area for any hints about where Natsu could have been taken. As they worked, they remained focused on their mission, determined to overcome this new obstacle and reunite with their brother. The journey ahead promised to be challenging, but the brothers were resolved to find Natsu and bring him back, no matter what it took. Chapter 15, The Trail to Goliath Osborne. As the brothers continued their search, they stumbled upon a series of strange, almost imperceptible tracks leading away from their campsite. They followed the trail, hoping it would offer some clue about where the doppelganger had originated. Their search led them to an old abandoned facility hidden deep in the forest. Inside, they discovered a room filled with advanced technology and surveillance equipment. Gamma 2 noticed the terminal still active, displaying footage of various locations. Among the images was a familiar face, Goliath Osborne, the enigmatic figure they had previously crossed paths with Darius examined the terminal closely. It looks like Goliath Osborne was behind this doppelganger. We need to find him and confront him about Naso. Gamma One nodded in agreement. Let's track him down and see what he's up to. He might have answers about Naso's disappearance. The brothers set out on a new quest to locate Goliath Osborne, their path leading them to a grand and imposing fortress. The fortress was surrounded by a high-tech security system, but with their skills and determination, the brothers managed to find a way inside. Inside the fortress, they discovered a sophisticated lab filled with more advanced technology and various experiments. In the center of the lab, Goliath Osborne was engaged in conversation with a restrained Naso who looked dazed but resolute. Goliath Osborne's voice was smooth and persuasive. Naso, you've been a formidable adversary, but you have the potential to be so much more. Join me and become one of the Iron Bloods. Together we could reshape the world in our image. Naso's eyes narrowed. 
his spirit fighting against the restraints. I will never join you, Goliath. I'll find a way out of here and stop your plans. Goliath smiled, unperturbed. I respect your determination. But once you see the power and the vision I offer, you might reconsider. The Iron Bloods are more than just a group. They're a force destined to change everything. As the conversation continued, the brothers infiltrated the lab, avoiding detection. They watched from the shadows, trying to piece together Goliath's plan and find a way to rescue Naso. Darius whispered to his brothers, we need to get Naso out of here and confront. Goliath. We can't let him recruit Nazo or carry out whatever plan he has. Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 nodded, ready for action. They quietly made their way through the lab, bypassing security systems and neutralizing guards with silent efficiency. As they approached the chamber where Nazo was held, they saw Goliath standing with his back turned, engrossed in his conversation with Nazo. With a sudden burst of energy, the brothers sprang into action. Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 tackled the guards while Darius confronted Goliath. Demanding answers. Life turned, his expression one of mild surprise and amusement. So the brothers have arrived, I must say. You've managed to find me sooner than I anticipated. Darius glared at him. We're here to rescue our brother. What are you planning, Goliath? And why did you create that doppelganger? Goliath's eyes gleamed with a hint of admiration. Impressive, I see you've done your homework. The doppelganger was merely a test, a way to gauge your resolve and distract you. My plans are far more intricate and involve far more than just not so. As Goliath spoke, the brothers freed Naso from his restraints. Naso's eyes met Darius's with a mix of relief and determination. I'm glad you found me. Let's put a stop to this. The confrontation with Goliath Osborne was tense and intense. Goliath tried to defend his actions, arguing that his vision for the world was for the greater good. But the brothers were not swayed. Their resolve to protect Naso and thwart Goliath's plans was unwavering. With a coordinated effort, the brothers and Nazo managed to overpower Goliath and his guards. The fortress was soon in chaos as alarms blared and security systems were deactivated. As the battle subsided, Goliath was restrained, and the brothers prepared to leave the fortress with Nazo. They knew that Goliath's defeat was just a step in their journey, but it was a significant one. They had rescued their brother and uncovered part of the sinister plot that threatened their world. Let's get out of here, Darius said, turning to Nazo. We have more to uncover and more to do, but at least we're together again. Nazo nodded, grateful for his brother's bravery and support. We'll keep pushing forward. Whatever Goliath's plans are, we'll make sure they don't come to fruition. The brothers and Nazo left the fortress, ready to face the challenges that lay ahead. Their journey was far from over, but their bond had been strengthened by their trials, and they were determined to protect their world from any threat that emerged. Chapter 16 Reunion and Revelation as the brothers and Nazo made their way through the dense forest, they emerged into a sunlit clearing. In the distance, they could see a familiar group of figures gathering around a makeshift campsite. The sight of Class 7 from the Trails of Cold Steel series brought a mixture of nostalgia and relief to Nazo. The Class 7 members, Leon Schwarzer, Elisa Rainford, Fight Klossel, Emma Milstein, Laura S.R. Side, Nashius Regnitz, Elliot Craig, Sarah Valestein, Gaius Wurzel, and Juices Albaria were engaged in conversation, their faces reflecting concern and curiosity when they spotted Natsu and his brothers, their expressions shifted to surprise and joy. Is that really Natsu? Elisa explained, her eyes widening as she recognized him. It's been so long, the group hurried over to greet Natsu and his brothers Rian, his face filled with a mix of relief and curiosity. Step forward, Natsu, it's good to see you. We heard some rumors, but we didn't expect to see you here. Nazo smiled, though it was tinged with the weariness of his recent experiences. It's great to see all of you again. It's been quite a journey. Fai's eyes narrowed with concern. What happened to you? We heard you'd been missing for years. Nazo took a deep breath and began recounting his adventures. A lot has happened since we last met. My brothers and I have been through quite a few trials. We encountered Goliath Osborne, who created a doppelganger of me to distract and test my brothers. He was trying to recruit me to his Iron Blood organization. Laura stepped closer, her expression serious. Goliath Osborne, we've heard about him and his plans. 
What exactly does he want? Nozzle nodded, his gaze intense. He wants to reshape the world according to his vision. His plans involve using powerful technologies and dark forces to control and manipulate others. He tried to recruit me to strengthen his cause, but we managed to thwart him, for now, at least. Rian looked at Naso with a mix of empathy and determination. You've been through a lot. We've had our share of battles and challenges as well, but it sounds like you and your brothers have faced some intense situations. Elliot added, it's good to have you back. We're all in this together, and we can help each other out. Naso's eyes softened with gratitude. Thank you. It means a lot to know that we're not alone in this. We've learned a lot and grown stronger, but it's good to have familiar faces and allies. As the conversation continued, the members of Class 7 listened intently to Naso's account of his recent experiences. The reunion was filled with shared stories, updates, and plans for the future Naso, and his brothers also learned about the recent developments in the world of Class 7 and how their friends had been faring. Sarah, always the strategist, brought up a practical concern. We need to stay alert. If Goliath Osborne is still out there with his plans, we must be prepared for anything. Perhaps we can join forces and make sure his schemes don't pose a threat to any of our worlds. Choose this agreed. That sounds like a good plan. We have resources and experience that could complement your efforts. Let's work together to ensure that we're ready for whatever comes next. The brothers in Natso were heartened by the support and camaraderie of their friends as they set up camp and began to strategize their next steps. They felt a renewed sense of hope and determination. The reunion with Class 7 had reinvigorated their spirits and reminded them of the strength found in unity. As night fell and the campfire crackled, the group shared stories, laughter, and plans for their future endeavors. They knew that the road ahead would be fraught with challenges, but with their combined strength and resolve, they were ready to face whatever lay ahead. The bonds of friendship and the promise of collaboration between the brothers in Class 7 forged a powerful alliance, setting the stage for the next chapter in their journey. Together, they prepared to confront the dangers that awaited and safeguard their worlds from the looming threats. The night had settled over the campsite, casting a tranquil blanket of darkness dotted with the gentle glow of stars. The crackling campfire provided a warm contrast to the cool night air, while most of the group slept peacefully exhausted from the day's events. Nazo, however, found himself restless. The weight of recent events, the reunion with Class 7, and the looming threat of Goliath Osborne filled his thoughts. Unable to sleep, he quietly slipped away from the camp, seeking solace in the serene night. He wandered through the forest until he discovered a picturesque lake, its surface reflecting the myriad of stars above. The gentle lapping of the water against the shore created a calming rhythm, and Natsu decided to sit by the edge, letting his feet dangle over the water. The night was still, save for the occasional rustle of leaves and the distant chirping of crickets. As he gazed up at the starry sky, his mind began to wander. Thoughts of his recent adventures and the people he'd met flooded his consciousness. Each memory seemed to swirl with the reflective surface of the lake, blurring the lines between reality and contemplation. Nazo's thoughts drifted first to his brothers, Darius Gamma 1 and Gamma 2. They had been through so much together, and their journey was far from over. He wondered what the future held for them, and how they could best prepare for the challenges ahead. The responsibility of leading his siblings weighed heavily on him. Then his mind shifted to Sonic. Despite the many conflicts and the complexities of their relationship, Sonic remained a significant figure in his life. Naso found himself remembering Sonic's characteristic confidence and his own struggles with the hedgehog. The thought of Sonic's butt, a recurring distraction, made Naso chuckle despite himself. 
It was a bizarre yet oddly persistent thought that seemed to pop up at the most unexpected moments. Next, his thoughts turned to shadow. The hedgehog's shadow had played a crucial role in their journey, providing guidance and warnings about future threats. Nazo recalled their interactions and wondered how Shadow was faring now that he had departed. What other missions lay ahead for the enigmatic hedgehog? His mind wandered further to the mysterious figure who had initially drawn them into this adventure. The enigmatic entity or force that had set everything in motion. Nazo tried to piece together the puzzle of their journey and understand the broader implications of their actions. The thoughts then turned to Leo, his brother in arms and close friend Leo's absence was deeply felt. And not so wondered how he was faring in his own battles and quests. The memory of Leo's unwavering support and bravery was a beacon of strength for Nasa. 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 The thought of Sonic's bus re-emerged, making Nazo shake his head in bemusement. It was an odd distraction, but it seemed to be a recurring element of his thoughts, perhaps a symbol of the conflicts and unresolved issues he had with Sonic. Lastly, Nazo's mind flickered to Zeno's boot, where Goku had confined Nazo's dark essence. The containment was a constant reminder of the dangers that lurked within him, and the ongoing struggle to keep those dark forces at bay. As Naso continued to gaze at the stars, he felt a sense of clarity beginning to emerge. The constellations above seemed to offer guidance, and the quietude of the lake provided a backdrop for reflection. He realized that despite the distractions and the complexities of his thoughts, he needed to stay focused on the present and the path forward. He resolved to talk with his brothers about the next steps and to remain vigilant against the threats they faced. The journey ahead would require strength, unity, and clarity of purpose. As he looked up at the stars one last time, Naso felt a renewed sense of determination. With a final glance at the serene lake, Naso stood up, feeling a bit more at peace. He turned back towards the campsite, ready to face whatever challenges awaited with his brothers and their allies. The night had offered him a moment of introspection, and he was now prepared to continue their journey with a clearer mind and a renewed sense of purpose. Chapter 18. As Natsu made his way back to the campsite, the night air was cool and crisp, and the sounds of the forest were soothing. His thoughts were more settled after his time by the lake, and he felt ready to face the challenges ahead with his brothers. However, fate had other plans. Unbeknownst to Nazo, a trap had been laid in the path he was taking. As he walked, the ground beneath him suddenly gave way, and before he could react, he was caught in a net that sprang up from the ground. The net tightened around him, lifting him off his feet and leaving him dangling helplessly in the air. Gotcha! A voice cackled from the shadows. Nazo struggled against the net, but it was woven with a material that seemed to suppress his energy, making it difficult for him to break free. From the darkness emerged a figure with a smug grin, plastered across his face. Fang the sniper. Well, 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 what do we have here? Fang sneered, twirling his gun casually. Looks like I've caught myself quite the prize. You're gonna fetch a pretty penny, you know that? Nazo glared at Fang, his frustration mounting. Let me go, Fang. You don't know who you're dealing with. Fang let out a sharp laugh. I know exactly who I'm dealing with. You're Nazo, aren't you? The one everyone's talking about. But right now, you're just a shiny piece of treasure, and I think I'll be taking you back to my base. Despite his struggles, Nazo couldn't break free from the net. Fang quickly secured the net to a pulley system attached to his hover bike. Effectively keeping Nazo trapped as he dragged him along through the forest. The ride was rough, and Nazo could feel every bump and jolt as Fang made his way back to his hidden base. After what felt like an eternity, they arrived at Fang's base, a rundown hideout concealed within a rocky canyon. Fang dragged Nazo inside, where various stolen goods and artifacts were haphazardly strewn about the place reeked of greed and ill-gotten gains. Fang tossed Nazo to the ground in front of a pile of treasures, kicking away some old crates to make space. He planted a boot on Nazo's chest, pressing down just enough to keep him pinned. Welcome to your new home, Fang said with a wicked grin. Now tell me, what's a powerful being like you doing out here all alone? 
Didn't your friends warn you about wandering around at night? Nazo seek but remain silent, focusing his energy on trying to find a way out of the situation. Fang, however, was too busy congratulating himself on his capture to notice Nazo's attempts. You know, Fang continued, I've heard stories about you, Nazo. You're a big deal, aren't you? Powerful, dangerous, but right now, you're just another piece of treasure for me to sell to the highest bidder. Nazo's mind raced, he had to find a way out before Fang decided to sell him off or worse. But for now, he was trapped, and his only option was to bide his time and wait for the right moment to strike. Back at the campsite, the rest of the group was starting to wake up, unaware that Nazo had been taken. They would soon notice his absence, but for now, Nazo was on his own, deep in enemy territory with a cunning and greedy opponent standing over him. Fang laughed to himself as he tightened the net around Nazo once more. Don't worry, Nazo, you'll be valuable to me, one way or another. Nazo knew he had to escape, but how? Chapter 19, Fang paced back and forth in his dingy hideout His thoughts racing as he glanced over at the restrained Nazo The possibilities ran wild in his mind as he considered his options Nazo was a powerful being, and possessing him opened up a world of opportunities Fang rubbed his chin, a wicked grin forming on his face Let's see, he muttered to himself, I could sell you off to the highest bidder there are plenty of folks out there who pay a fortune to get their hands on someone like you. But then again, he paused, eyeing Nazo with a gleam of greed and something else in his eyes. Maybe I should keep you for myself. Imagine the power I could wield with you under my control. You can make me unstoppable. Nazo's glare remained intense, though he was calculating his own escape. Fang's eyes, however, were locked onto Nazo, and an unsettling thought crept into the twisted mercenary's mind. Or Fang used his grin growing even wider. I could make you mine in a more personal way, Mrs. Fang the Sniper, huh? How about that? You'd be right by my side, and together we'd be unstoppable, not to mention it'd be quite a twist, wouldn't it? The great Nazo, wife to Fang the Sniper, you wouldn't escape me then. Nazo felt a surge of anger and disgust at the suggestion. The very idea of being subjugated by Fang, let alone being reduced to a mere possession where some twisted fantasy was revolting. He tightened his fists, trying to channel his energy, but the net still held him back. Fang seemed to sense the intensity of Nazo's rage and laughed darkly. Oh, I see you don't like that idea, but you don't really have a choice, do you? Whether I sell you, keep you as my personal weapon, or Fang lean closer, his voice dropping to a whisper. Make you my wife, it's all up to me. He straightened up, looking around his hideout. But I know you're good for nothing, brothers will come looking for you. They're probably already on their way, thinking they can save you. But I won't let them take you from me. I need to decide fast before they show up and ruin everything. Thing. Fang walked over to a nearby table cluttered with gadgets, treasures, and old maps. He started rummaging through the mess, still thinking aloud. If I sell you, I need to find a buyer quick But if I decide to keep you I'll have to make sure your brothers don't find us And if you're gonna be Mrs. Fang Well, I better make sure we're well hidden Nazo watched Fang's every move Trying to anticipate his next decision The thought of being trapped in such a nightmarish situation Made him more determined than ever to escape He had to find a way to break free And soon before Fang made his twisted choice Chapter 20, Fang the Sniper, having made his twisted decision, wasted no time. He arranged a hasty ceremony in the dark recesses of his hideout with only his goons as witnesses. Not so bound and powerless, was forced to stand by Fang's side as the mercenary slumly declared him his wife. Naso's mind was racing, trying to figure out a way to escape, but the situation had spiraled out of control. The ceremonial binding was quick, brutal, and utterly humiliating Fang made it clear that Nazo was now his. But in the back of his mind, the mercenary knew that keeping someone as powerful as Nazo would be difficult in the long run. The moment the twisted ceremony ended, Fang wasted no time contacting Miphiles the Dark, an entity even more sinister than himself. Fang had no intention of keeping Natsu. His true plan was to sell him to the highest bidder, ensuring that Natsu would be far out of reach from his brothers and anyone else who might try to rescue him. 
Nephiles, intrigued by the offer, appeared before Fang in a shadowy manifestation. His eyes gleamed with malevolent curiosity as he regarded Natsu, who stood helpless beside Fang. So, this is the infamous Natsu, Nephiles mused, his voice like a hiss of darkness. You've managed to capture quite a prize, Fang, and you're willing to part with him so easily? Fang grinned, his hand tightening around Natsu's arm. Easily? Hardly. But I know you, Nephiles. You'll pay well, and you're the only one who can keep him out of the hands of those meddling brothers. Consider it a transaction between business partners. Nephiles stepped closer, his form shifting and writhing like living shadows. He placed a cold, intangible hand on Natsu's shoulder, sending a shiver through him. And what exactly are you offering, Fang? Just Natsu, or is there more? Fang's grin widened as he played his final card, not just Natsu. He's my wife, now bound to me by marriage, but I'm willing to make him your throne as well, a symbol of your power. Keep him away from his brothers, and you'll have a weapon no one else possesses. He'll be both your consort and your seat of power. Miphiles' eyes flared with dark amusement. A throne, you say? How fitting. Very well, Fang. You have a deal. With a wave of Miphiles' hand, dark energy surged, creating a binding contract between them. Nazo felt the cold grip of Miphiles' power tighten around him, sealing his fate. He was now bound to Miphiles' as well, a twisted plaything in the hands of the dark being. Fang released Nazo into Miphiles' grasp, satisfied with his profit. Just remember Miphiles, keep him far from his brothers. They'll be looking for him, but as long as he's with you, they'll never find him. And don't forget, he's mine. Even if he's your throne now. Chapter 21, Nazo found himself. Suddenly, disoriented as a swirling vortex of energy enveloped him, pulling him from the clutches of Mephiles the Dark. The world around him shifted, and before he knew it, he was standing on unfamiliar terrain. The sky was a strange shade of orange, and the landscape was a mix of futuristic technology and wild, untamed nature. Nazo had been partially transported to a new universe, the universe of Ratchet and Clank. As Nazo tried to get his bearings, he heard the sound of engines approaching. Moments later, a small agile ship landed nearby, and out stepped a Lombax with a wrench in hand, and a small robot hovering beside him. Hey there! The Lombax called out, his voice filled with curiosity. You look like you're not from around here, I'm Ratchet, and this is Clike. Who are you? Nazo, still trying to process everything, introduced himself briefly. I'm Nazo, I was pulled here from another place. Not sure how, but it seems I'm stuck here for now. Ratchet exchanged a glance with Clank before stepping forward. Well, if you're stuck here, you might as well help us out. We're dealing with a big problem, some kind of dimensional rift that's threatening to tear our universe apart. We could use an extra pair of hands, or in your case, an extra set of powers. Clank nodded in agreement. Indeed, your abilities might be just what we need to stabilize the rift and prevent catastrophic damage. Nazo, seeing no other option, agreed to help. Fine, I'll help you, but we need to move quickly. If this rift is as dangerous as you say, then we don't have much time. Together, the trio set off on a mission to locate the source of the dimensional rift and find a way to close it. As they journeyed through various planets and faced off against enemies, Nazo began to realize that this universe was far more complex than he initially thought. The technology was advanced, the enemies were formidable, and the stakes were incredibly high. As they ventured deeper into the heart of the problem, Nazo found himself bonding with Ratchet and Clank, despite their differences. They worked well together, each bringing unique strengths to the team. Nazo's dark powers complemented Ratchet's combat skills and Clank's intelligence, creating a formidable force against the challenges they faced. But as they got closer to the source of the rift, Nazo couldn't shake the feeling that his presence in this universe was not just a coincidence. There was something or someone behind his arrival, and he needed to figure out what that was before it was too late. Chapter 22 Nazo found himself more deeply entangled in the events of Ratchet and Clank, rift apart as he continued to assist Ratchet and Clank in their quest to stabilize the dimensional rift, threatening their universe. Each new challenge tested his abilities, pushing him to adapt and grow in ways he hadn't anticipated. As they traveled through the shattered dimensions, Nazo became increasingly aware of the magnitude of the threat they faced. 
The universe was fracturing, and the line between realities was growing dangerously thin. The trio had to move quickly to prevent everything from collapsing into chaos. The search for the Dimensionator. Their first major goal was to locate the Dimensionator, a powerful device capable of opening portals between dimensions. Ratchet believed it was the key to closing the rift and saving their universe. However, the device was in the possession of Emperor Nefarious, a tyrant who had already begun to exploit the rift for his own gain. Nazo's abilities were put to the test as they fought their way through Nefarious forces. His dark energy attacks combined with Ratchet's skill with his wrench and clanks. Technological expertise made them a nearly unstoppable team. Despite the overwhelming odds, they managed to track down the Dimensionator, only to discover that it had been damaged in the chaos. During their travels, they encountered Rivet, a female Lombax from the alternate dimension who had been fighting against the tyranny of Emperor Nefarious in her own world. Rivet was weary of not so at first, given his ominous appearance and powers, but Ratchet vouched for him, and they quickly formed a tentative alliance. Together, they hatched a plan to repair the Dimensionator and use it to close the rift. Nazo, sensing Rivet's determination and strength, found himself respecting her in a way he hadn't expected. She was a fierce warrior, and her resolve reminded him of the many allies he had fought alongside in the past. As they prepared for their final confrontation with Emperor Nefarious, Nazo couldn't shake the feeling that something more was at play. The rift, the dimension hopping, and his own arrival in this universe. Everything felt interconnected, as if an unseen force was manipulating events from behind the scenes. The final battle was intense. Nazo, Ratchet, Clank, and Rivet fought with everything they had against Emperor Nefarious and his army. The Emperor was relentless, using the Rift's instability to his advantage, summoning forces from different dimensions to overwhelm the heroes. But Nazo tapped into a deeper well of power, drawing on the experiences and memories of his past battles. He unleashed a devastating attack that shattered nefarious defenses, giving Ratchet and Rivet the opening they needed to strike the final blow. With Nefarious defeated, they quickly turned their attention to the Rift Clank. Using the repaired Dimensionator worked to stabilize the tier in reality, Nazo lent his energy to the process, channeling his dark powers in a way he had never done before. The Rift slowly began to close, the chaotic energy dissipating as the dimensions were realigned. A new understanding. As the rift finally sealed shut, the universe around them began to stabilize Nazo. Feeling a sense of relief, looked at his companions, Ratchet, Clank, and Rivet, and realized that he had forged a bond with them that transcended their different worlds. Nazo knew his journey wasn't over. There were still questions to be answered, especially about his sudden arrival in this universe and the unseen force that had been guiding them. But for now, he was content knowing that they had saved countless lives from destruction. As they stood together, looking out over the repaired universe, Ratchet turned to Nazo. So what now? Are you going to stick around or do you have other worlds to save? Nazo smirked, his eyes gleaming with determination. There are always more worlds to protect, but I think I'll stay a bit longer. After all, there's still so much to learn, and who knows what other adventures lie ahead. With the universe safe and the rift closed, Nazo, Ratchet, Clank, and Rivet prepared for whatever new challenges the future might hold, knowing that as long as they stood together, there was nothing they couldn't overcome. Chapter 23 as the dust settled from their battle against Emperor Nefarious and the rift was finally sealed, the group took a moment to catch their breath and reflect on everything they had been through. The air was still charged with the energy of their victory, but there was a calmness now, a rare moment of peace after the storm. Nazo who had been relatively quiet since the rift was closed, leaned against a piece of rubble and looked out at the stars, his mind a whirlwind of thoughts. Ratchet, Clank, and Rivet noticed his contemplative mood and gathered around him, curious about what was going through his mind. Hey, Naso. Ratchet started, his tone both friendly and inquisitive. 
You've been pretty quiet since we finished off Nefarious. Something on your mind. Nazo glanced at them, a small smile playing on his lips. Just thinking about everything that's happened. You know, I've been to a lot of places, seen a lot of things. But this, this was something else. Rivet, still getting used to Naso's demeanor, folded her arms and gave him a nod. You handled yourself pretty well out there. I can see you're no stranger to crazy adventures, but you've got us curious now. Where exactly do you come from, and what kind of places have you seen? Naso looked at them, considering how to begin. He hadn't really opened up about his past to many people. Especially not to those from another universe entirely But after everything they had gone through together He felt a connection with them A bond forged in the fires of battle Well, Naso began, his voice steady But tinged with a hint of nostalgia I'm from a universe that's complicated To say the least, I've traveled through countless worlds Met all kinds of people Some friends, some enemies but there are a few that stand out, ones who've shaped who I am today. He paused for a moment, collecting his thoughts, then continued. There's Sly Cooper, a master thief from a world where anthropomorphic animals live like human Sly's a raccoon. Always quick with a plan and even quicker with a joke. He taught me a lot about strategy, about how to think on your feet. Then there's Ty, a Tasmanian tiger from another universe A true hero who's faced down all kinds of dangers to protect his homeland He's got a heart as big as his boomerangs Ratchet and Rivet exchanged glances intrigued by the diverse cast of characters Naso was describing Clank, always the analytical one Listened intently, processing everything and then there's Sonic, Naso continued, his tone softening as he spoke of the blue blur. He's well, he's fast, faster than anyone I've ever met. But more than that, he's got this unshakable determination to protect his friends and his world. We've had our differences, but in the end, he's someone I respect, even if we didn't always see eye to eye. As Naso spoke, memories flooded back Sonic's infectious energy, his rivalry with Shadow The times they had fought side by side to save the multiverse Each memory brought with it a wave of emotion A reminder of how far he had come And then there's Goku, Naso said, his voice growing more serious He's a Saiyan, a warrior from a world where battles are fought on a scale you wouldn't believe Goku's got a heart of gold, always pushing himself to be stronger, to protect those he cares about He's someone who's shown me the importance of never giving up, no matter how tough things get Ratchet Rivet and Clank listened in awe as Naso described these figures from his past Each one more extraordinary than the last And then there's my brother, Darius Naso continued his expression becoming more introspective We've been through so much together and we've both changed in ways we never expected He's my family, my closest ally And we face down more enemies than I can count but even with all that, we're still searching for a place to call home Rivet raised an eyebrow, intrigued sounds like you've had one hell of a journey And with all those people, it's no wonder you're still going strong But what about the place you're from? What's it like? Nazo sighed, looking up at the stars It's a place of constant change, of endless possibilities but it's also a place of great danger The multiverse is vast and it's easy to get lost in it That's why I've been searching for something more something Why I ended up here with you guys Ratchet gave Nazo a reassuring pat on the back Well, you're welcome to stick around as long as you need Nazo You've got friends here too And we could always use someone with your skills Clank nodded in agreement, indeed Nazo, the multiverse is a vast and unpredictable place But with allies like us, you're never truly alone 
Naso smiled, feeling a warmth he hadn't felt in a long time. Thanks guys, that means a lot. And who knows, maybe I'll find what I'm looking for after all. As they sat together under the night sky, sharing stories and reflecting on their adventures, Nazo realized that for the first time in a long while, he felt a sense of belonging. It wasn't the end of his journey, far from it, but it was a step in the right direction. And with new friends by his side, the future seemed just a little bit brighter. Chapter 24 The Next Morning the sun rose over the horizon, casting a warm glow across the landscape. Nato, Ratchet, Clank, and Rivet were up early, ready to face whatever challenges the day might bring. As they gathered their gear and prepared to move out, a sudden, familiar distortion in the air caught their attention. A portal, crackling with energy, opened up nearby. Nazo's eyes widened in recognition he'd seen this kind of portal before, one that connected different universes, allowing friends from other worlds to appear. As the portal stabilized, two figures stepped out, Sly Cooper and Ty, the Tasmanian Tiger. Sly, Ty, Nazo called out, rushing forward to greet his old friend. Sly, ever the smooth operator, gave Nazo a grin and a quick salute with his cane. Long time no see, Nazo missed us. Ty, with his usual laid-back attitude, adjusted his boomerangs and nodded good day, mate. Looks like we found you in one piece, huh? Nazo smiled, feeling a rush of relief and happiness at seeing his friends. You guys have no idea how glad I am to see you, but what brings you here? Sly glanced around, taking in the new surroundings We got a little tip off that you might need some help And well, you know us, always up for an adventure Ty added, plus we figured it was about time we caught up You've been off gallivanting through universes without us And we can't have that, can we? As they shared a laugh, Ratchet, Clank, and Rivet approached Curious about the newcomer's Ratchet Always one to welcome allies, extended a hand Hey, I'm Ratchet, and this is Clank and Rivet Looks like you're friends of Naso. Sly shook Ratchet's hand, his eyes gleaming with curiosity. Nice to meet you, Ratchet. Name Sly Cooper, Master Thief, and all-around charmer. Ty grinned, giving them a thumbs up. And I'm Ty, just a simple bloke from down under, but I'm always ready to help out a friend. Rivet, intrigued by the new arrivals, gave them a nod. So what's the plan? I'm guessing you guys didn't just drop by for a chat. Naso now feeling a renewed with his friends by his side nodding we've been through a lot already but i have a feeling there's more to come with you guys here we're even stronger we'll figure out our next steps together as they stood together discussing their next move the bond between them grew even stronger sly and ty quickly filled in ratchet clank and rivet on their own adventures while naso felt a sense of belonging that had been missing for a long time the universe was vast and full of Friends like these, Nazo knew he could face whatever came next. Together, they would continue their journey, ready to explore new worlds, take on new challenges, and most importantly, protect each other no matter what. The adventure was far from over. It was only just beginning. Chapter 25 as Sly and Ty shared the details of their latest adversaries. Ratchet, Clank, and Rivet listened intently. Sly described their encounters with a rogue group of mercenaries and treasure hunters, while Ty recounted a series of unfortunate events involving misadventures and mistaken identities. The group agreed that dealing with these threats seemed like something they could handle themselves. They were just about to set out when an alarming tremor shook the ground beneath them. The sky above began to darken, and the environment around them started to dissolve into nothingness. Nazo's eyes widened in horror. This isn't good. The world is collapsing. Ratchet, always quick on his feet, shouted. We need to act fast. We can't let this universe disappear without finding a way out. Rivet and Clank, equally concerned, began scanning their surroundings for any signs of escape. The once vibrant world around them was quickly turning into a swirling vortex of collapsing terrain. Everyone hold on! Ratchet commanded, we need to find a way to stabilize our exit! Nazo, determined not to lose his new friends, grabbed Ratchet's arm. 
I'm not letting you go without a fight. If this universe is disappearing, we're going to stick together. Clegg chimed in, his voice calm amidst the chaos agreed. We should focus on finding a safe passage. We may be able to use a dimensional stabilizer to create a temporary portal. With the world rapidly deteriorating, Natsu and the others worked together to follow Ratchet and Clank's lead. They raced through the disintegrating landscape, looking for any clues or tools that could help them escape. As the last remnants of the universe were consumed by the swirling void, they spotted a shimmering portal, just large enough to accommodate them. Ratchet, Clank, Rivet, Sly, and Tide rushed towards it with Natsu close behind. The group dove into the portal, just as the world around them vanished entirely. The sensation of being pulled through the void was disorienting. And the next thing they knew, they landed on a new, unfamiliar island. The air was fresh and the environment was lush and green. A stark contrast to the collapsing universe they had just left behind. The group picked themselves up and looked around. The island was picturesque, with tall palm trees, gentle waves lapping at the shore, and a sense of tranquility that felt oddly reassuring after the chaos they had just experienced. Nazo scanned the surroundings, a sense of relief washing over him. We made it, but we need to figure out where we are and what comes next. Sly adjusted his hat and looked at the others. Looks like we've got a new adventure on our hands. First things first, let's explore the island and see if there's any way to get our bearings. I nodded, stretching his arms. Sounds good to me. A little exploration might help us figure out our next steps. Rivet, still weary but hopeful, added, let's stick together and see if we can find any clues about our current location. We might find something that can help us get back to where we were or at least understand why this universe collapsed. With renewed determination, the group set out to explore the island, each step bringing them closer to uncovering the mysteries of their new surroundings. As they ventured into the unknown, they knew that whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them together, drawing strength from their camaraderie and their shared resolve. Chapter 26 The group, now settled on the island, was cautiously exploring their surroundings when they heard the distant sounds of voices. Instinctively, they hid behind the dense foliage, straining to hear what was being discussed. Through the rustling leaves, they saw a towering figure approach, flanked by a group of well-armed crew members. This imposing figure was Captain Shellbreaker, a notorious pirate captain known for his ruthless approach to conquering and destroying worlds. His hulking form was clad in dark, battle-worn armor, and his presence exuded an air of authority and menace. Arr, so it's true. Captain Shellbreaker growled, addressing his crew. This universe is gone. No point in lingering here. Set the course for the next one on the list. We have work to do. His crew, a mix of rugged individuals and heavily armed soldiers, murmured in agreement. The clanking of their weapons and the creaking of the ship's deck added to the tension in the air. Captain Shellbreaker's sharp eyes scanned the horizon, his expression a mix of satisfaction and impatience. But remember lads, there's one particular treasure I'm after not so is mine to deal with, make sure he stays on our radar. The crow perched on Captain Shellbreaker's shoulder caught loudly, adding an eerie note to the already tense atmosphere. The crew nodded in understanding, their attention focused on their captain's orders. As the crew began their preparations to move on, Nato and the others exchanged worried glances. They heard enough to know that Captain Shellbreaker 
and his crew were a serious threat And their presence here was far from coincidental Ratchet whispering to the group said we need to be careful If they're targeting not so specifically That means they're aware of his significance We have to find a way to stay hidden And figure out our next move Clank ever the strategist nodded in agreement Indeed, if they are destroying universes as they go It's crucial we avoid attracting their attention Our priority should be to understand their objectives And find a way to thwart them Sly, peeking through the foliage added We should also find out where their ship is docked If we can locate it We might be able to gather information Or find a way to sabotage their plans Ty agreed, his eyes scanning the area for any signs of the ship I'll scout ahead and see if I can find anything useful But we need to be discreet We don't want to end up in a situation where we're outnumbered The group nodded in agreement and took their positions As Ty stealthily made his way to investigate The rest of the group continued to observe from their hiding spot They knew that staying hidden was their best chance to avoid a confrontation with Captain Shellbreaker and his crew While Ty ventured out to gather information Ratchet and Rivet discussed their options If we can find a way to disrupt their operations Or locate any vulnerabilities in their ship We might be able to delay their plans Or even prevent them from causing more damage Ratchet said Rivet agreed her days resolute We should also keep an eye out for any allies or Resources that could help us in this situation If we can find a way to rally support Or gain additional tools It could make a significant difference As the sun began to set Casting long shadows over the island Ty returned with crucial information I found their ship He reported quietly It's anchor offshore And they're preparing to move out I also overheard them Talking about a secure location Where they're storing their plans and possibly not so The group exchanged determined looks They knew that time was of the essence With Captain Shellbreaker and his crew gearing up for their next move They had to act quickly to thwart their plans And ensure that not so And the multiverse remained safe As the night grew darker the group prepared to make their next move They knew that their journey was far from over And that the challenges ahead would test their resolve and unity But with their combined skills and determination They were ready to face whatever threats lay in their path And protect the universes from the looming danger Chapter 27 Nazo sat in a dimly lit chamber aboard Captain Shellbreaker's ship the walls were lined with metal plating, and the only light came from a flickering oil lamp on a nearby table. The room smelled of salt water and machinery. A testament to the ship's relentless travels across the multiverse, his hands were bound, but his mind was racing with thoughts of escape and confusion. Captain Shellbreaker stood before him, his towering figure casting a long shadow across the floor. The captain's eyes, sharp and calculating, bore into Nazo as he paced slowly. You must be wondering why you're here, Shellbreaker said, his voice gruff and steady. I didn't just bring you here for sport. Nazo, trying to maintain his composure, looked up, why am I here, what do you want from me? Shellbreaker paused, a hint of something akin to nostalgia flickering in his eyes, he sighed deeply and leaned the table. It's quite a story, one that stretches back farther than you might imagine. You see, I wasn't always this mechanical monstrosity you see before you. Nazo's curiosity was piqued. What are you talking about? Captain Shellbreaker looked out of a small porthole, the distant stars reflecting in his eyes. Many years ago, I was a being of flesh and blood. I was once a proud warrior, a defender. But they had other plans for me Showbreaker's voice grew softer Tinged with a hint of sadness As one of your fathers, Nazo Before you and your brothers were born I was a part of the experiment that created you My DNA was used to forge your existence Nazo's eyes widened in shock You're saying you're your Yes, Showbreaker 
Breaker confirmed nodding I was one of the donors for your creation I was known then by another name One that's been lost to time Since I became what I am now The creators of your kind took my essence And used it with others to create beings of immense power Captain Shellbreaker walked over to a chest And retrieved a small vial inside Was a single long strand of dark hair He held it out to not so this is a reminder of what I once was I gave this strand of hair to your creators Not knowing what would become of it Years later, I learned that it was your essence that carried a part of me Nazo's mind raced, trying to process the revelation So you're saying you're my father? Shellbreaker nodded slowly, in a manner of speaking I didn't know if you or your brothers would ever find out the truth It was a risk I took when I gave that Seeing how you and your brothers evolved, there's evolved It wasn't until recently that I realized the truth of our connection Nazo struggled with his emotions The weight of this revelation crossing heavily on him Why did you want to capture me? What do you plan to do with me? Shellbreaker's expression hardened I need to ensure that my legacy is preserved That my influence remains strong If I have to capture and control you to achieve that So be it, you're part of my lineage And I will not allow you to fall into the wrong hands Nazo's frustration boiled over You can't just control me or use me as a pawn I have my own path, my own destiny You can't dictate me. Captain Shellbreaker's gaze softened But only slightly I understand your anger But sometimes the burdens of legacy are heavy I didn't choose this fate for myself nor for you I can only do what I believe is right Nazo remains silent Processing the complexity of his emotions With the realization that Captain Shellbreaker was one of his fathers Added a new layer of depth to his journey Intertwining his past with the present in a way he had never anticipated Before he could respond further Shellbreaker's crew burst into the room Announcing that they were preparing to set sail for the next universe Captain Shellbreaker turned to not so his expression resolute This isn't over, Nazo You may have your own path, but so do I And I will see this through to the end you will remain here under my watch until I determine the next course of action. With that shell breaker left the room, leaving not so to contemplate his new reality. The connection between them was now undeniable. The weight of that connection hung heavy in the air. As not so awaited his fate, he couldn't help but think about his brothers, the friends he had made, and the journey that lay ahead. Chapter 28. As Captain Shellbreaker's ship cut through the vast expanse of the multiverse, a sense of tension hung heavily in the air. Not so bound and struggling with his emotions, remained in the dimly lit chamber, awaiting his uncertain fate. Outside the room, Captain Shellbreaker and his crew prepared for their next destination, oblivious to the approaching storm. Unbeknownst to them, see no Kimmo and Gamma 2 all alongside Ratchet, Clank, Rivet, Sly, and Ty had been tracking the ship for hours. The combined skills and determination to rescue Nazo had led them straight to Shellbreaker's vessel The Arrival Zeno and the Gamma androids navigated the ship's corridors with precision Their advanced technology allowing them to evade detection Ratchet, Clank, Rivet, Sly, and Ty move stealthily Each aware of the stakes as they prepare to confront Captain Shellbreaker and his crew With his unmatched speed and agility live the charge This is it, we need to move quickly Noxo's life is at stake Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 follow closely the powerful frames Ready for battle, Ratchet, Riven, and Clank Arm themselves with their most powerful weapons While Sly and Psy remain poised for any surprises The battle begins the crew's preparations were abruptly interrupted when Zeno and the others burst into the main deck of Captain Shellbreaker's ship. The sudden intrusion caught Shellbreaker and his crew off guard. Captain Shellbreaker's eyes widened as he saw the intruders. What is the meaning of this? A dism wasted no time. We're here to rescue Nassau and put an end to your tyranny. 
of fear Now we'll rock to the show Vector's crew Scramble to defend their ship Zeno, Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 Fall with relentless precision The combined efforts dismantling the crew's defenses Ratchet and Rivet engage with their weapons Blasting through the ranks of shell breakers Men, Walk Lang provided crucial support with his gadgets Fly and Ty use their agility and stealth to take down enemies from the shadows Using their skills to disable the ship's defenses and create openings for their allies The final confrontation As the battle raged on, Shellbreaker confronted Zeno His massive frame imposing even in the chaos You think you can defeat me so easily? I won't let you take Nasso from me Ratchet, Clawbreaker clash, their combatants locked in a fierce struggle Shellbreaker's mechanical enhancements gave him an edge But Zeno's speed and skill proved to be formidable Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 supported Zeno Their combined might gradually overpowering Shellbreaker's defenses Ratchet and Red working in tandem targeted Shellbreaker's ships Core systems aiming to weaken the vessel and prevent any escape Their coordinated assault drew Shellbreaker's attention Giving Zeno the chance to strike with a powerful blow, Zeno and Gamma 1, aided by Rivet and Ratchet's precision attacks, finally overwhelmed. Captain Shellbreaker, the captain's mechanical enhancements crackled and fell as he slumped to the ground. No! Shellbreaker roared in frustration, his final moments filled with anger and disbelief. Rescue and reconciliation. With Captain Shellbreaker defeated and his crew vanquished, the ship was swept in disarray. Not so, hearing the commotion, strained against his bonds, desperate. Embracing his braver, we got here just in time Nasso, though relieved, looked at his brothers With a mixture of gratitude and concern Thank you all, I didn't think you'd make it We would miss it for the world Sly said with a grin Now let's get out of here before any more trouble comes our way The group made their way back to the ship's exit Nasso in tow As they navigated the chaos left by the battle They could hear the distant sound of Captain Shellbreaker's crew Who had either fled or been incapacitated the heroes made their way to their own ship, which had been waiting for them. As they departed from Captain Shellbreaker's ruined vessel, Nazo looked back at the remains of the ship, feeling a sense of closure. Thank you all, Nazo said earnestly, I owe you more than I can ever repay. We're family, Gamma 2 replied, placing a reassuring hand on Nazo's shoulder. We look out for each other. Ratchet clank and rivet exchange smiles Glad to have helped Ratchet said Let's just hope our next adventure is a little less eventful With that the group set course for their next destination Ready to face whatever the multiverse had in store With that the group set course for their next destination Ready to face whatever the multiverse had in store for them As the star streaks passed Not so felt a renewed sense of hope and purpose Knowing he was not alone in his journey Chapter 29 Back at Nazo's place the heroes return to Natsu's base. Their faces marked with the exhaustion and satisfaction of a hard-fought victory. Ratchet, Clank, and Rivet gathered their gear, preparing for their next journey through the multiverse. As they packed, Natsu approached them. His expression a mix of gratitude and sadness. I'm going to miss you all, he said sincerely. You've been incredible allies. Ratchet clapped Natsu on the back. We'll be around. The multiverse is a big place, and who knows when our paths might cross again. Clank and Rivet nodded in agreement. Good luck with your quest, Rivet added. We're sure you'll find the answers you're looking for. With heartfelt farewells, Ratchet, Clank, and Rivet set off in their ship, leaving Nazo, Tai, Sly, and Zeno behind as their ship faded into the distance. Nazo turned to his remaining friends. Nazo seeks Vegeta. Nazo, feeling the weight of his unresolved questions, decided to seek out Vegeta. Hoping that the Saiyan warrior might provide the guidance he needed, Tai and Sly. Understanding the importance of Naso's quest, offered to accompany him, but Naso insisted he go alone. Stay here and get some rest, Naso said. I'll handle 
this Vegeta might have insights that could help me understand my situation better. With a nod of agreement, Ty and Sly settled in for some downtime while Nazo set off to find Vegeta a chance encounter. Nazo traveled to a familiar training ground where Vegeta was known to train intensively. The area was quiet, with the only sounds being the distant echoes of Vegeta's grunts as he pushed himself to the limit. Nazo approached cautiously, but before he could reach Vegeta, a strange sensation washed over him. He felt an unsettling presence nearby, one that made the hair on the back of his neck stand on end. Out of nowhere, Sonic XC appeared, stepping out of the shadows with a menacing grin. The dark version of Sonic looked at Nasso with a twisted amusement. Well, 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 Sonic XC drawled. Look who's here, Nasso, welcome home. Nasso's eyes narrowed as he took in the sight of Sonic XC. What are you doing here? This isn't your universe. Sonic XC chuckled darkly. Oh, I've been watching, and I've been waiting for the right moment. You see, there's a reason why you feel drawn to this place. You and I are more connected than you think. Before Nazo could react, Sonic XC moved swiftly and placed a hand over Nazo's mouth, pulling him close. Welcome home, Sonic XC whispered with a sinister edge. You're not alone in this multiverse. There are many like you lost and searching. Nazo struggled momentarily, but Sonic XC's grip was firm. The dark hedgehog's eyes gleamed with malevolent intent. You see, you're part of a larger plan. And now, you're a part of mine. Just as things were becoming increasingly tense, Vegeta appeared. Sensing the disturbance, his eyes scanned the scene before him, and his expression hardened when he saw Sonic and get away from him. Vegeta demanded, his voice carrying authoritative edge. Sonic XC sneered, but released not so stepping back. Enjoy your moment, Vegeta. This isn't over. With a final dark chuckle, Sonic XC vanished into the shadows, leaving Naso and Vegeta alone. Conversation with Vegeta! Naso, still shaken from the encounter, took a deep breath as Vegeta approached. The Saiyan warrior's stern gaze softened slightly as he saw Naso's distress. You okay? Vegeta asked, crossing his arms. I think so, Naso replied, his voice steady. Sonic XC just, he knows more about me than I'd like. I was hoping you might have some answers. Vegeta nodded his expression, thoughtful. I sense there's more to your story than you realize. The multiverse is a complex place, and sometimes those who dwell in the shadows can be both allies and adversaries. Naso looked at Vegeta, seeking any insight he could provide. I need to understand why I'm being targeted, and why I feel this connection with Sonic XC. Vegeta regarded Naso with a serious look. You're part of a larger design, one that intertwines with the very fabric of this multiverse. There are forces at play that seek to use you for their own ends. It's important to stay vigilant and understand your own power. Naso nodded, absorbing Vegeta's words. Thank you. I'll keep that in mind. As Naso and Vegeta prepared to part ways, Vegeta offered one last piece of advice. Keep your friends close and never underestimate the darkness that lurks in the corners of this universe. Your journey is far. With that, Nazo watched Vegeta disappear into the distance, feeling a renewed sense of purpose. He knew that his quest was far from complete and that the path ahead would be fraught with challenges. But with newfound determination, Nazo prepared to face whatever came next in his journey through the multiverse. Nazo struggled as Sonic Eggsy's mouth opened wider, the Dark Hedgehog's insidious plan becoming all too clear. Nazo's attempts to fight back seemed futile as Sonic Eggsy's powerful grip restrained him, and he was soon engulfed by the darkness within Sonic Eggsy's mouth. Inside Sonic Eggsy's mouth, Nazo found himself enveloped in an unsettling, suffocating darkness. The texture of the interior was slick and humid, the walls undulating with a grotesque, almost alive quality. Nazo's breathing grew heavy as he realized the full extent of Sonic Eggsy's plan. Sonic XC's voice resonated ominously around him. Give up, Nazo. You're going to be living inside me from now on. There's no escape. The dark hedgehog's taunting words echoed in the confined space, fueling Nazo's determination despite the discomfort and the oppressive environment. Nazo struggled to remain calm, 
He had faced countless adversaries and challenges throughout his journey, and he wasn't about to give up now. Nazo used his powers focusing on his energy and attempting to manipulate the environment around him. The darkness within Sonic X's mouth was thick, but he tried to create a small amount of light to gauge his surroundings. The struggle. As Nazo continued his efforts, Sonic X's voice grew increasingly impatient. Struggling won't do you any good. The more you resist, the more you'll suffer. Nazo gritted his teeth. Concentrating on breaking free from Sonic X's grip, he used every bit of his strength to push against the walls of Sonic X's mouth, trying to find a way out. Finally, Nazo's efforts began to pay off. The darkness around him seemed to waver slightly, and he felt a small but significant shift in the environment. He continued to push, using his powers to amplify his efforts, a glimmer of hope. Just as Sonic X's patience was wearing thin, Nazo managed to create a burst of energy that caused a reaction within Sonic X's mouth. The Dark Hedgehog's expression shifted from smug satisfaction to surprise and discomfort. What is this? Sonic X growled, feeling the pressure building inside his mouth. You're more resilient than I thought. Nazo took advantage of Sonic X's distraction. He intensified his efforts, pushing against the walls and using his energy to create a small opening. With each push, the gap widened slightly, allowing him to see a sliver of light. Escape. Nazo seized the opportunity and forced his way through the gap he had created. With one final burst of energy, he managed to escape from Sonic X's mouth, landing on the ground outside with a thud. Sonic. He roared in frustration as Natsu emerged, his dark eyes blazing with anger. You think you can escape me so easily? This isn't over. Confrontation. Nazo stood, brushing himself off and taking a deep breath. He faced Sonic Exe with renewed determination. You're right. It's not over. I won't let you or anyone else control me. Sonic Exe's form flickered, and he seemed to retreat into the shadows. His anger palpable. We'll meet again, Nazo, and next time you won't be so lucky. With that, Sonic Exe vanished, leaving Nazo alone in the quiet aftermath of their confinafin. Sonic. Nazo took a moment to collect his thoughts. The encounter with Sonic X had been a harrowing experience, but it had also strengthened his resolve. He knew that the path ahead would be fraught with challenges, but he was more determined than ever to face them. As he prepared to continue his journey, Nazo thought of his friends and allies who were waiting for him. He knew that they were counting on him, and he was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. With a renewed sense of purpose, Nazo set off, ready to continue his quest through the multiverse, knowing that his journey was far from over and that he would need to stay vigilant against the forces that sought to control him. Chapter 31 Nazo found himself in a new, unfamiliar world, one filled with vibrant landscapes and unusual technology. As he wandered through this strange environment, he came across a figure battling a group of robotic enemies. The figure moved with incredible speed and agility, wielding electric powers that crackled with energy. As Nazo observed, the figure dispatched the robots with ease, sending sparks flying in all directions. When the battle was over, the figure turned to Nazo, revealing a determined expression. Who are you? The figure asked, his voice tinged with curiosity. On Nazo, he replied, stepping forward, and you, name Spark, Spark the Electric Jester. The two exchanged glances, a mutual understanding forming between them. Nazo could sense the power radiating from Spark, and he knew this world was different from any he had encountered before. Looks like you're in the middle of something Nazo said, gesturing to the remnants of the robots. Yes, yeah, Spark nodded. These machines are part of something bigger. I'm trying to take down the one responsible for all this chaos. Then I guess I'll help. Nazo offered I face my share of enemies. Let's see what we're up against. 
spark raised an eyebrow But not if you're up for it, let's go Together, Nosso and Spark venture deeper into the world Facing wave after wave of robotic enemies And overcoming various obstacles as they fought side by side Nosso began to understand the intricacies of this world Its challenges, its enemies, and the mysterious forces that controlled it Throughout their journey, Nazo witnessed Spark's resilience and determination He was reminded of his own struggles and the battles he had faced The two became a formidable team, each complementing the other's strengths As they approached the final showdown with the mastermind behind the robotic invasion Spark turned to Nazo I don't know where you came from, but I'm glad you're here Spark said, this fight isn't just about me anymore It's about stopping this threat once and for all Nazo nodded, a faint smile on his lips Let's finish this, Spark With that, they charged into the final battle Their combined powers pushing them to the limit The fight was intense, with the fate of the world hanging in the balance But with determination and teamwork, Nazo and Spark emerged victorious, defeating the villain And restoring peace to the world as the dust settled, Spark turned to Nazo. Thanks for your help. I don't think I could have done it without you. Nazo shook his head. We both fought hard. You have a strong will, Spark. Keep using it to protect your world. With a nod, Spark watched as Nazo prepared to leave. Where will you go now? Nazo glanced into the distance. There's always another challenge, another place where I'm needed. But I'll remember this world and the fight we had here. That Nazo set off once again, leaving Spark to protect his world, knowing their past might cross again someday. Chapter 32. Nazo, having gone through the events with Spark the Electric Jester, finds himself reflecting on his past, the memories of his old master, she the bio-android, and Leo, his brother-in-arms, resurface. The connection he once felt with them stirs conflicting emotions within him. As Nasso's journey continues, he unexpectedly encounters both Shade and Leo. The reunion is initially filled with a sense of nostalgia, but it quickly turns bitter Nasso, who had held on to the idea that they would always be there for him, realizes that they had moved on with their lives without him. The loyalty and camaraderie he thought they shared seemed to have been forgotten by them. Feeling betrayed and hurt, Nasso confronts them. His voice, usually calm and composed, now carries a sharp edge. I thought you were my allies, my family, he says, his eyes narrowing with a mix of anger and sorrow. But you abandoned me, you moved on, leaving me behind as if I never mattered. Shay tries to explain, but Nasso cuts him off. You don't get to justify it. If you truly cared, you would have looked for me. You would have fought for me like I fought for you. Leo, standing beside Shade, remains silent, his guilt evident. Natsu's disappointment is palpable as he turns away from them. You're nothing to me now, he says coldly, casting them out of his life. Go back to whatever you were doing. I don't need you anymore. With that, Natsu walks away, leaving Shade and Leo behind. The pain of their betrayal lingers, but Natsu knows he must move forward. His journey isn't about them anymore. It's about finding his own path free from the shadows of his past. With that, Nazo walks away, leaving Shade and Leo behind. The pain of their betrayal lingers. But Nasso knows he must move forward. His journey isn't about them anymore. It's about finding his own path, free from the shadows of his past. Chapter 33 As Nazo walks away, the atmosphere between Leo and Shade becomes tense. Thick with unspoken words and lingering emotions, the two stand in silence for a moment, watching Nazo's figure disappear into the distance. The weight of what just transpired hangs heavy in the air.
Leo finally breaks the silence, his voice subdued. I never thought it would come to this. We were like brothers once. How did it get so messed up? Crosses his arms, his expression stoic, but with a hint of regret in his eyes. We were like brothers once. How did it get so messed up? Shay crosses his arms, his expression stoic, but with a hint of regret in his eyes. We all made choices, Leo. We moved on because we thought it was the right thing to do. We didn't expect him to hold on to the past like this. Maybe we should help Leo replies His tone filled with self-reproach Not so thin through so much We should have been there for him Shade sighs, rubbing the back of his neck As he tries to find the right words We were in different places Dealing with our own battles It's not like we didn't care about him But maybe we underestimated How much he needed us Leo glances at Shade, frustration and sadness evident in his eyes You think it's too late to make things right Shade hesitates, his days drifting to the spot where not so has disappeared It might be not so's hurt, and he's not the type to forgive easily Especially not when he feels betrayed, but he pauses Considering his next words carefully But if we want to make amends We have to show him that we're still willing to fight for him Even if he doesn't want us to Leo not slowly, his determination growing We can't just let things end like this We owe it to him, to ourselves to try Maybe we can't change the past But we can still be there for him in the present Shade's expression softens slightly as he looks at Leo agreed We'll find a way to make it right, even if it takes time With a shared resolve, the two of them stand there for a moment longer Gathering their thoughts and strength They know the road ahead won't be easy But they're determined to prove their loyalty to not so Even if he doesn't want them in his life right now They won't give up on him they prepare to set off after not so shakes speaks once more his voice firm will find him And when we do we'll remind him that he is not alone no matter what With that Leo and Shade begin their pursuit Hoping to find a way to reconnect with Nazo and repair the bonds that once held them together Chapter 34 As Darius Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 continue their search for Nazo they find themselves deep in a dense forest The towering trees cast long shadows Making it difficult to see far ahead The air is thick with tension Each of them feeling the weight of Natsu's absence Darius, driven by his determination to find his brother Pushes forward, his focus is so intense that he barely notices When he stumbles upon a figure lying on the ground It's only when he gets closer that he realizes who it is Cell, the perfect android Cell appears to be in a dormant state His eyes closed as if he's in deep thought Or perhaps even unconscious Darius hesitates for a moment Unsure whether to approach But his curiosity and concern get the better of him He kneels down beside Cell, observing him closely You look like you've been through a lot Darius murmurs, more to himself than to Cell Suddenly, Cell's eyes snap open Glowing with a cold calculating light Darius flinches, but doesn't back away. Instead, he meets Cell's gaze with a determined look. You're one of Dr. Jiro's creations, aren't you? Darius asks, trying to understand what might have happened to leave Cell in such a state. Cell smirks, his voice low and smooth. I am, and you, you seem familiar. You must be related to not so. Darius nods cautiously. He's my brother. We've been looking for him. Have you seen anything that might help us find him? Cell tilts his head slightly, his expression unreadable. Perhaps I have, but what interests me more is the power you and your brothers possess. It's intriguing. 
Before Darius can respond, he feels something cold and slick begin to wrap around his leg. He looks down in alarm to see Cell's tail, previously lying dormant, now coiled around him. Darius tries to pull away, but the tail tightens its grip, snaking up his body with surprising speed. Cell, what are you doing? Darius demands, panic creeping into his voice. Cell's smirk widens into a sinister grin. I'm just borrowing a little of your energy. You won't mind, will you? Darius struggles, but Cell's tail is relentless. It wraps around him completely, pinning his arms to his sides. He tries to call out to Gamma 1 and Gamma 2, but his voice is muffled as the tail envelops him further. Darkness creeps into the edges of his vision as the tail coils tighter, absorbing him silently and efficiently. Inside the confines of Cell's tail, Darius is engulfed in darkness. He can no longer see or hear anything outside, only the sensation of his energy being drained. His thoughts race as he tries to figure out how to escape, but it feels like he's trapped in a void with no way out. Meanwhile, outside, Cell's expression is one of satisfaction as he feels Darius's power flowing into him. Such potential, a shame to waste it. Cell murmurs to himself, his tone almost contemplative. satisfaction as he feels Darius's power flowing into him. Such potential. A shame to waste it. Cell murmurs to himself, his tone almost contemplative. Gamma 1 and Gamma 2, who had been a short distance away, finally notice that Darius is missing. They rush back to where they last saw him, only to find Cell standing alone, a strange, satisfied look on his face. Where's Darius? Gamma 1 demands, his voice filled with urgency. Cell turns to face them, his expression calm and composed. I'm afraid your brother won't be joining us, but don't worry, his power will live on, inside me. The realization hits Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 like a ton of bricks. Their brother has been absorbed by Cell anger and despair wash over them, but they know they have to keep their wits about them if they're going to rescue Darius or what's left of him. They prepare for a confrontation, knowing that they'll have to face Cell's newfound strength, bolstered by the power of their brother. The stakes have never been higher, but they're determined not to lose Darius, no matter the cost. Chapter 35 Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 stand side by side Their expressions steeled with determination The air crackles with tension as Cell No one viewed with Darius's power Looms before them, his eyes glowing with a predatory light Despite the overwhelming odds, the two brothers refuse to back down They know that to save Darius, they must defeat Cell, no matter the cost Gamma 1, the more strategic of the two, quickly analyzes the situation We have to divide our efforts if we stay together, we risk losing both Naso and Darius. I'll go after Cell. You continue searching for Naso. Gamma 2 hesitates for a moment, worry flickering in his eyes. Are you sure you can handle it on your own? Gamma 1 nods, his gaze locked on Cell. I have to, we can't afford to let Cell. Get away with our brother, I'll find a way to free him. You focus on finding Naso, he's the key to all of this. With a firm nod, Gamma 2 agrees. Though the decision weighs heavily on him, they share one last glance, a silent promise to reunite and save their brother before they split up. Gamma 2 turns and rushes deeper into the forest, his mind racing with thoughts of not so. Gamma 1, on the other hand, charges towards Cell, who smirks at the challenge. You think you can defeat me? Cell taunts, his voice dripping with arrogance. With your brother's power, I'm unstoppable. We'll see about that. Gamma 1 retorts, his voice steady. He knows that this battle is more than just physical. He needs to outsmart Cell, exploit any weaknesses he can find. 
The battle erupts in a blur of speed and power Gamma 1's agility and precision are matched by Cell's overwhelming strength now enhanced by Darius's energy The Gamma 1 fights with a singular purpose To save his brother, he launches a series of rapid, calculated attacks testing Cell's defenses and looking for any sign of weakness As the fight rages on, Gamma 1 notices something peculiar Despite Cell's confidence, there's a slight hesitation in his movements As if he's struggling to fully control Darius's power Gamma 1 realizes that Darius might still be fighting from within Resisting Cell's control Using this to his advantage, Gamma 1 presses the attack Pushing Cell harder and harder With every blow, he forces Cell to exert more energy Hoping to weaken his hold on Darius Meanwhile, Gamma 2 sprints through the forest, his thoughts racing He knows time is running out, but he can't shift the feeling that not so is close He pushes forward, driven by a deep sense of urgency As he moves, he scans the area, searching for any sign of his brother Back at the battle, Gamma 1 finally sees his opening cell Momentarily distracted by Darius' internal struggle Leaves a gap in his defenses, Gamma 1 seizes the opportunity Channeling all his power into a final, decisive blow His fist connects with Cell's chest Sending a shockwave of energy through the android's body Cell recoils in pain His composure shattered The force of the blow destabilizes him And for a brief moment, Darius's consciousness surfaces Gamma One locks eyes with his brother Seeing the desperation and determination in his gaze and in his gaze Now, Darius, fight back! Gamma One shouts, urging his brother to take control. With a monumental effort, Darius musters every ounce of willpower and pushes back against Cell's influence. The struggle is intense, but Darius's determination is unyielding finally. With a burst of energy, Darius breaks free from Cell's grasp, separating from the android in a flash of light. Exhausted but free, Darius collapses to the ground, gasping for breath. Gamma 1 rushes to his side, helping him up so weakened and enraged Snarls at them, but knows he's lost the advantage With a final glare, he turns and flees, disappearing into the forest We have to find Gamma 2 and Nazo! Darius says weakly, his voice laced with exhaustion Gamma 1 nods in agreement, but they both know that splitting up was necessary They can't let Cell escape, but they also can't lose Nazo. Gamma 1 makes a quick decision You rest here, Darius, I'll go after Cell He can't have gone far And I'll make sure he doesn't come back Gamma 2 will find Nazo Darius, too tired to argue Nods and sits down to catch his breath Gamma 1 sets off after Cell Determination burning in his eyes As for Gamma 2, he continues his search Hoping to find Nazo before it's too late The brothers are spread thin But their resolve is unwavering No matter what challenges lie ahead They're determined to bring their family back together Starting with finding Nazo Chapter 36 Nazo found himself in a strange, surreal environment It was as if he were floating in an endless void With only the faintest glimmers of light dancing around him He couldn't remember how he got here or where he was But the place felt oddly familiar Like a memory buried deep within his subconscious as he tried to make sense of his surroundings, a deep, resonant voice echoed through the void, sending shivers down Natsu's spine. Welcome, Natsu. The voice said, calm and powerful. It's been a long time since we last spoke, though you may not remember. Nazo's eyes widened in realization He recognized that voice, though it took him a moment to place it He's a Nagi, a manipulator, the god of this universe He whispered to himself, stunned by the revelation How had he ended up inside the very essence of the god who governed his reality? Yes, Nazo, he's a Nagi responded His voice seeming to come from all around Nazo You have been brought here for a purpose Though it is not by your own will You see your destiny has always been intertwined with mine And now it is time for you to understand your true role in this universe Nazo 
still try to grasp the situation, but it was overwhelming. The sheer magnitude of being inside of God, of being spoken to directly by Izanagi made him feel small and insignificant despite his own immense power. Why am I here, he asked, his voice trembling slightly. What do you want with me? Izanagi's tone softened, almost as if he were speaking to an old friend. You have been through much, not so betrayed, forgotten, manipulated, but you have also shown great strength and resilience. You are more than just a being of power. You are a key to the balance of this universe. And now, you are within me because our fates are converging. Nozzle felt a strange sensation, as if his very essence was being intertwined with the fabric of the universe itself. What does that mean, he asked, trying to keep his composure. Why me? What am I supposed to do? Izanaki's voice grew more serious. There is a darkness rising, Nazo, a force that threatens not just you, but everything that exists within this universe and beyond. You have encountered pieces of it, figures like Sonic, and Z, Gilead Osborne, and even Captain Shellbreaker, but these are mere manifestations of a greater, more insidious power. Your role is to stand against it, to be the light that fights back the shadows. Nazo clenched his fist, feeling a surge of determination. But I've been fighting all my life. I've been betrayed by those I trusted, cast out by those I considered family. How am I supposed to fight a threat like this, especially when I don't even know who I can trust anymore? You are not alone, Nazo. Izanagi reassured him. You have allies, some of whom you have yet to fully realize. And more importantly, you have yourself. The power within you is greater than you know. Not just the power of destruction, but of creation of balance. I will guide you, but you must also trust in your own strength and in judgment. Nazo was silent for a moment, processing everything. Even Nagi had said the weight of responsibility felt heavy on his shoulders, but he also felt a sense of purpose, something he had been searching for, even if he hadn't realized it. So what do I do now, he asked. Finally, his voice resolute. Izanagi's voice was gentle but firm. First, you must return to your brothers and your allies. They need you, and you need them. Together, you will face the challenges ahead. But remember, Naso, this journey will not be easy. There will be sacrifices, and you will be tested in ways you cannot yet imagine. But if you stay true to yourself, and to those who fight beside you, you can overcome the darkness. Naso nodded feeling a sense of resolve building within him. I won't let you down, Izanagi. I'll do whatever it takes to protect this universe. I believe in you, Nazo. Izanagi said, his voice full of warmth and encouragement. Now, it is time for you to return. But remember, I will always be with you, guiding you, even when you cannot hear my voice. With that, the void around Nazo began to shift and swirl. The light intensified until it enveloped him completely. He felt a rush of energy as he was pulled back into the physical world. His mind still reeling from the encounter with Izanagi. But as he opened his eyes, he knew one thing for certain. He was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead with the power of a god and the heart of a warrior. Chapter. 37, as Nazo felt himself being pulled back to the physical world, Izanagi's voice resonated one last time more somber and introspective than before. Not so. Izanagi began, his tone carrying a weight that made Nazo pause in his return. There is one more truth you must know before you face what lies ahead. Once your journey is complete, once the darkness is defeated and balance is restored, your true place is not in the world you know. It is within me. Naso felt a chill run through him. What do you mean, Izanagi? My true place? Izanagi's voice remained calm. There was an undeniable sense of finality in his words. You are a unique being, Naso. You were never meant to merely exist as a warrior, a wanderer, or even as a hero. Your true purpose, the reason you were created, is to become one with me. Together, we will maintain the balance of the universe Ensuring that the cycles of creation and destruction continue as they should Nazos are pounded in his chest You're saying that once this is all over I'll cease to exist as I am I'll become part of you Yes, he's 
Izanagi replied gently, but understand And also, this is not an end, but a fulfillment of your destiny You will not be lost or forgotten Instead, you will transcend your current form, becoming something greater Together, we will be the guardians of this universe Its unseen protectors, ensuring that order fulfills over chaos This is the role you were always meant to play Nazo struggled to comprehend the gravity of what Izanagi was telling him. All his life, he had fought to find his place, to understand his purpose. And now he was being told that his journey would culminate in becoming part of the very essence of the universe itself. But what about my brothers? What about the friends I've made? The people I fought for and with I won't be able to stay with them. They will continue their own paths as they are meant to, Izanagi said. And they will remember you, Naso, not as someone who was lost, but as someone who fulfilled their ultimate purpose. Your presence will remain in their hearts and in the balance of the universe. They will feel your influence, even if they do not know it. His mind raced with conflicting emotions Fear, acceptance, sorrow, and a strange sense of peace He's in Nagi I don't know if I'm ready for that I've always been a fighter, someone who stands on the front lines To give all of that up It's hard to imagine I understand also He's in Nagi said softly And you have time to come to terms with this The battle ahead is not yet won And your journey is far from over But when the time comes Know that you will not be alone I will guide you And together we will embrace the destiny That has been laid out before you Now so not as slowly Feeling the pull of the physical world growing stronger I, I'll do my best to see Nabi I'll fight for this universe For my brothers, for everyone And when the time comes, I'll face my destiny With that, the connection between them faded And Nazo found himself back in the physical world Standing in the middle of the landscape He had just left the stars still shimmering above The night still calm, but everything felt different The weight of his newfound knowledge crashed heavily on his shoulders But there was also a clarity in his mind Nazo knew what he had to do And he knew what awaited him at the end of his journey But for now, he would fight He would fight for those he cared about for the universe that needed him And for the future that lay ahead No matter what it might hold Chapter 38 As Nazo returned to the physical world His thoughts heavy with the revelations from Izanagi The ancient god remained in his ethereal realm Contemplating the future that awaited them both Izanagi's vast consciousness swirled with countless thoughts and possibilities Each one centered on the inevitability of Nazo's integration into his being Izanagi, despite his omnipotence, had always existed in a state of solitary guardianship. His role as the universe's caretaker, the maintainer of balance, was a duty that required immense power and wisdom, but it was also a lonely existence. The thought of Natsu becoming a part of him was both a comfort and a curiosity, a unique connection that he had never experienced before. In the void of his realm, Izanagi began to prepare. He focused on the nature of Naso, the essence of who he was, a warrior forged in the fires of countless battles, a soul shaped by loyalty, strength, and an indomitable will. Naso was not merely a collection of memories and experiences, he was a being of profound purpose and potential. What will it be like? Izanagi mused to himself To share my existence with another To have Naso's consciousness intertwined with mine To feel his thoughts, his emotions, his memories as if they were my own 
He knew that the integration would not be a simple merging. Nasso's individuality was strong, his spirit unyielding. To bring him into the fold would require a delicate balance, ensuring that Nasso's essence was not overwhelmed or lost. Instead, Izanagi envisioned a harmonious union where both their consciousnesses could coexist, enhancing each other in ways that neither could achieve alone. In the void of his realm, Izanagi whispered to the void, I will show him the beauty and purpose of this existence. Together we will oversee the balance of the universe. And Naso will find that his journey does not end, but rather it transforms into something even greater. But there was more to this preparation than just creating a space. Izanagi also pondered the dynamics of their combined power. Naso's strength, honed through years of combat and hardship, would be a formidable addition to Izanagi's already vast abilities. The two of them together would be an unstoppable force, capable of shaping the very fabric of reality to maintain the balance of the universe. With not so easy, not he thought I will no longer bear this burden alone. He will bring new insights, new strategies, new ways of understanding the complexities of existence. His presence will be a light in the solitude that has been my existence for eons. Beneath these musings, Izanagi felt a subtle emotion, an emotion that was unfamiliar to him. It was anticipation, perhaps even excitement, the prospect of this new existence, of sharing his eternal life with another, was something he had never truly considered before. It was a strange feeling for a being who had always been alone, always apart from the creations he watched over. What will it be like? Izanagi wondered again to not just observe the universe, but to experience it through Naso's eyes. To feel what he feels to understand the world in ways that only a mortal turned immortal could. The preparations continued and Izanagi's anticipation grew. He knew that the time was not yet upon them that Naso still had battles to fight and a destiny to fulfill in the physical world. But when the moment arrived when Naso was ready to take his place within Izanagi, the god would be prepared to welcome him with open arms. And in that moment, the universe itself would change, not just because of the union of their powers, but because of the new perspective that Naso would bring to the ancient guardian. Together, they would become something more than either could have been alone, and the balance of the universe would be stronger for it. I look forward to our journey together, Naso, Izanagi thought as he continued his preparations. When the time comes, we will transcend the limits of existence, and together, we will ensure that the light of the universe never fades. Chapter 39 The day had finally arrived, a day that Natsu had both dreaded and accepted in the deepest parts of his being. The skies above were painted in hues of twilight, as if the universe itself was aware of the profound event that was about to take place, Naso stood alone on a quiet mountaintop, the wind rustling through his fur as he looked out over the vast expanse of the world he had fought so hard to protect. He had said his goodbyes, his brothers, Gamma 1 and Gamma 2, Darius, and the friends he had made throughout his journey, Sonic, Sly, Ty, Ratchet, Clank, and so many others were safe. They had fought alongside him, shared in his victories and defeats, and now they would continue their lives, free from the burden that Naso had carried, but he knew that this was his path, his destiny. Ozanagi's voice resonated within him, a calm and powerful presence that had guided Naso through his final days in the physical world. It is time, Naso. Are you ready? 
Naso took a deep breath, the weight of the moment pressing down on him. I am ready, he replied, his voice steady, but laced with a hint of sadness. He knew that once he entered Izanagi, there would be no turning back. His life as Naso, the warrior, the brother, the friend, would end, and he would become something entirely new. A shimmering portal began to form in front of him, a gateway to Izanagi's realm. It was beautiful, a swirling vortex of light and energy that pulsed with the rhythm of the universe itself. Naso stepped forward, his heart pounding in his chest, and with one final look at the world he was leaving behind, he walked into the portal. As he crossed the threshold, Naso felt a profound change take hold of him. The physical world faded away, replaced by a vast ethereal plane that seemed to stretch on forever. He was no longer bound by the limitations of his mortal form. He was now a part of something greater, something timeless. Izanagi's presence enveloped him, warm and reassuring. Welcome, Naso. You are now within me, and together we shall ensure the balance of the universe is maintained. Naso could feel his consciousness expanding, merging with Izanagi's memories, emotions, and experiences flowed between them, intertwining in a way that was both exhilarating and overwhelming. He could feel Izanagi's ancient wisdom, his understanding of the cosmos, and in return, Izanagi absorbed Naso's strength, his determination, and his unbroken will. The transition was seamless, and soon, Naso could no longer distinguish where he ended and Izanagi began, they were one, a singular entity with a shared purpose. Yet even in this unity, Naso's individuality remained intact. He was still himself, but he was also more, more powerful, more aware, more connected to the universe than he had ever been. This is your new life, Naso, Izanagi said, his voice resonating within their shared consciousness. You are no longer just a warrior, but a guardian, a protector of the balance that holds the universe together. Together we will watch over all that exists and ensure that it endures. Naso felt a sense of peace settle over him, a calm acceptance of his new role. The fears and uncertainties that had plagued him were gone, replaced by a deep understanding of his purpose. He could see the threads of faith that connected every living being, the intricate tapestry of the universe, and he knew that this was where he belonged. As they began their eternal vigil, Naso couldn't help but think of his brothers, his friends, and the life he had left behind. But he knew that they were safe, that they would continue to live and thrive, and that was enough. Thank you, Izanagi, Naso thought, his consciousness melding completely with the gods, for showing me my true purpose and for giving me the strength to fulfill it. And thank you, Naso, Izanagi replied, a hint of warmth in his ancient voice, for bringing new life to an existence that has been solitary for too long. Together we will be unstoppable. And so, Naso and Izanagi began their eternal journey, two souls united as one, watching over the universe with a vigilance and strength that would never falter. The warrior had become a guardian, and in his new life, Naso found a peace that he had never known before. Chapter 40, The End As a group of Natsos friends gathered together on a peaceful hilltop, the sky above them shimmered with an otherworldly glow. The night was calm, the stars twinkling brightly, and a gentle breeze carried the sounds of the night. They had come together from all corners of the multiverse. Sonic, Sly Cooper, Ty the Tasmanian Tiger, Ratchet, Clank, Rivet, Spark, the Electric Jester, Rian, Laura, Fi, Emma, Elisa, and many others, each of them connected by their bond with Natsu. They stood in silence, gazing up at the sky. Though they couldn't see Nazo, they could feel his presence, strong and protective, watching over them from wherever he had gone. Sonic was the first to speak, his voice tinged with emotion. Nazo, I don't know if you can hear us, but we're all here, we're all thinking about you. His usual confident tone was softer, reflecting the respect he held for his friend. Sly nodded, his sharp eyes softened with sadness You were one of the best, Nazo, you always had our backs No matter what, we won't forget you, buddy Ty, ever the optimist, managed a small smile Mate, I reckon you're out there doing what you do best Looking after everyone, keeping things safe You've always been a hero 
And you'll always be working our eyes Ratchet standing beside Clank and Rivet Took a deep breath, you showed us what it means to be strong Nazo, not just in battle but in heart Wherever you are, I hope you know that you made a difference We'll keep fighting just like you did Clank chimed in with a small nod of agreement His mechanical voice full of sincerity Indeed you have inspired us all Not so your legacy will live on in our actions Rivet, who had shared only a short time with Nazo Felt the weight of his absence You were something special, Nazo It was an honor to fight alongside you We'll carry on your spirit no matter where we go Spark the electric jester Having fought his own battles Relate to Nazo's journey You fought for what you believed in Nazo, that's something I respect You're a true warrior And I know you're still out there protecting us all Rian stepped forward His eyes reflecting the stars above Nazo, you are more than just a fighter You are our friend and our comrade We'll keep moving forward Just like you would want us to No matter what challenges come our way We'll face them together With you in our hearts Laura, Fi, Emma, and Elisa all nodded In agreement, each of them holding their own memories of Nazo close You were a guiding light, Nazo, Laura says softly We'll continue to follow that light Wherever it may lead us Fi added, her usually quiet voice filled with emotion You were always there for us, Nazo We'll be here for each other, just like you taught us Emma and Elisa both shared similar sentiments Their eyes shining with tears that they fought to hold back The group stood in silence once more Each of them lost in their own thoughts, their own memories of Nazo They knew that he was no longer physically with them but they could feel his presence Watching over them like a guardian Then as if in response to their collective thoughts The sky above them seemed to shimmer even more brightly A single star, more radiant than the others Seemed to twinkle with a special light It was as if Nazo was sending them a message Letting them know that he was still with them Even if they couldn't see him, Nazo Sonic whispered, his voice carrying on the breeze We won't forget you ever We'll keep fighting Sly at it just like you would And we'll keep your memory alive Ty said his voice filled with determination One by one by one they all added their voices A chorus of love, respect and remembrance For their friend who had gone to a higher purpose As they stood there, united in their shared memory of Nazo They knew that they would continue to face whatever challenges came their way Just as Nazo had taught them And though the path ahead might be difficult they knew they would never be alone Nazo would always be with them In their hearts, guiding them through the darkness Just as he had always done And so, with a final look at the radiant star above The group slowly began to make their way back to their own paths Each of them carrying a piece of Nazo with them A piece of the Guardian who had touched their lives in ways they would never forget
Born to change a life that's filled with endless pain, chasing truth in a shattered sky, brother. Shadow where I lie, fought the battles, faced the night side by side through wrong and right. Yet I wonder who am I when stars collide and worlds divide through broken plans. I lost my way, I lost my mind But in the chaos I hear a call To find myself and lose it all Lost in the shadows, searching for a light I'm fighting through the darkness of this endless night I am more than one thing My brothers side by side in this war, no place to hide. Watch now, so far, a feet in flame, but still I search to break the chains across the stars from time and tears. Face my fears through endless years, absorbed by darkness, nearly gone. But still I stand, I'm a Now this time that 
Darius sat in their home, the sun casting a warm glow over the living room. He looked at his young son, Voltex Android 18, sat nearby, reading a book, her calm presence, a steady anchor for their family, Voltex. With his curious eyes and a mix of Darius's tenacity and 18's sharpness, was always eager to learn more about his family's past. Voltex, come here for a second. I think it's time I told you more about your uncle. Voltex's ears perked up. He'd heard snippets here and there. Legends of an uncle named Natsu who had faced countless universes, battled fearsome enemies, and even saved entire worlds. But Darius had always been reluctant to speak about Natsu in detail. Today seemed different. Uncle Natsu? You mean the one who's been everywhere and done everything? He asked, his eyes wide with anticipation. Darius chuckled, nodding. Yeah, that's him. But there's more to Natsu than the stories you've heard. Android 18 put her book down and looked at Darius with a knowing smile. She knew this conversation was important for both father and son. Gary Uncle Natso, he's a complicated figure. He's been through a lot, seen a lot more than most of us could ever imagine. But he's also been lost, lost to himself and to us. When we were younger, we thought we'd always be together, but the universe had other plans. What happened to him, Dad? Darius sighed, searching for the right words. Natsu got caught up in the pursuit of power, of purpose. Sometimes, that pursuit can take you to dark places. He fought so hard to protect the things he cared about, but in doing so, he lost himself. And somewhere along the way, we lost him too. Voltex's young mind tried to process everything. Do you miss him? Darius' eyes softened. Every day I've tried to find him, to bring him back. But Natsu, he's not the same anymore. He's been through so much that I don't even know if he recognizes himself, let alone his family. Do you think I could meet him one day? Android 18 leaned in, adding gently, meaning not so wouldn't be simple, Voltex. He's in a place now where he might not remember who we are, or even who he is. But if there's one thing your father has taught you, it's to never give up on family. Voltex nodded, determination etched on his young face. Then I want to find him, Dad. I want to help Uncle Naso remember. Darius smiled, feeling a swell of pride. You've got a brave heart, son. If anyone can reach him, maybe it's you. It won't be easy. The universe is fast, and Natsu's presence is elusive. But with the right mindset and enough willpower, you could find him. A flicker of hope sparked in Darius's heart. Perhaps Voltex's curiosity and drive were exactly what was needed to bridge the gap between the brothers. The idea of Voltex embarking on a journey to find his uncle brought a sense of purpose back to their family. I'll do it, Dad. I'll bring Uncle Naso back to us, no matter what. Darius placed a hand on his son's shoulder, his expression serious yet hopeful. Then we'll prepare together. I'll tell you everything I know and we'll be ready for whatever the universe throws at us. As the family began to discuss their plans, Darius couldn't help but feel a renewed sense of determination. Maybe, just maybe, there was still hope for Nazo to come back to his true self, and perhaps Voltex was the key to making that happen. Chapter 42 Confrontation with Cell Nazo had left Izanagi's domain, a heavy weight pressing down on his shoulders. The encounter with Izanagi had been intense, leaving him with a lingering feeling of uncertainty and dread. There were so many unanswered questions, and now he had a mission to find Scourge. If anyone had the answers, it might be him. Scourge had a way of navigating the darker parts of the multiverse that few others did. 
As Natsu moved through the distorted realms between dimensions, he found himself in a desolate wasteland, an empty, eerie place that reeked of battles long fought. He intended to keep his head low, to avoid any unnecessary conflicts, but fate, as always, had other plans. Up ahead, Natsu saw a tall, imposing figure stand in the midst of the ruins. It was unmistakable cell. The bio-android stood still, his eyes closed as if in meditation. Natsu knew better than to engage with Cell, especially in such a mood. He turned on his heel, trying to quietly slip away before he was noticed. But it was too late. In an instant, Cell's tail shot out like a whip, wrapping tightly around Natsu's waist. The grip was firm, unyielding Natsu's eyes widened. And he struggled against the tight hold, but it was futile. Cell's strength was on a different level. Cell, well, well. Look who decided to cross my path, Cell said with a low menacing chuckle, opening his eyes and fixing his gaze on Natsu. You know, it's not polite to turn your back on someone who hasn't dismissed you yet. The tail pulled Natsu up close, bringing him face to face with the bio-android Natsu. Could feel the cold, calculating energy radiating off of Cell, a stark reminder of the danger he was in. But Natsu wasn't one to back down even when cornered. Naso, Cell, I'm just passing through. I don't want any trouble. Naso replied calmly, though his muscles tensed, ready for a potential fight. I have bigger things to deal with right now. Cell's lips curled into a smirk. Bigger things, you say? And what could be more important than your own survival? His tail squeezed a bit tighter around Naso, enough to make him grimace. Or perhaps you think yourself strong enough to ignore me? Naso struggled against the tail's grip. Feeling the pressure increase, I'm looking for someone's self. If you let me go, I'll be out of your hair and we don't have to waste time fighting. Cell chuckled, amused. Always so confident, aren't you? But I wonder, what makes you think I'd let you go so easily? He leaned closer, his piercing eyes studying Natsu's face. You see, I've been quite bored lately. And a little entertainment might be just what I need. If you think I'm just gonna roll over and give you a show, you're mistaken, not so shot back. But if you really wanna know, I'm looking for Scourge. Maybe you've seen him. Cell's expression shifted slightly at the mention of Scourge. Ah, the hedgehog with a penchant for chaos and destruction. He's been quite the nuisance. But why would you, of all beings, be looking for him? You're not exactly on the same side now, are you? Nazo's eyes narrowed. I need answers. And he's got a way of getting around that others don't. Maybe he can help me with something personal. Cell seemed to ponder this for a moment, his tail relaxing just a fraction. Mm -hmm. Intriguing. Perhaps I could use this to my advantage. You see, not so I thrive on chaos, on the destruction of those who think they can outwit or outpower me. If you think Scourge will give you the answers you seek, perhaps I should let you go. Under one condition. What's that? You find Scourge, you come back to me, and you tell me everything. And in exchange, I might just let you live a little longer. Cell said with a cruel smile, consider it a mutually beneficial arrangement. Nazo knew better than to trust Cell, but right now he had little choice. If he wanted to move forward, he needed to get out of this situation. Fine, you've got a deal. Now let me go. Cell stared at him for a moment longer, then the flick of his tail released Nazo. Nazo landed lightly on his feet, his muscles still tense and ready for a fight. But Cell simply turned his back, dismissing him like an insect. I'll be waiting, Nazo. Don't keep me waiting too long or I might get impatient, he said, his voice dripping with dark amusement. Nazo didn't waste a moment and turned and continued on his path, his mind racing. The encounter with Cell was troubling, but at least he still had a chance to find Scourge. Maybe, just maybe, he could find the answers he so desperately needed. But he knew one thing for sure, he had to be prepared for anything.